Hi. Oh, one second. I just forgot to do something. Let me just, I'm just going to turn the screen back off again. One second. Sorry, just realised I haven't taken my meds <laughs> with my lunch and uh, don't want to get banned from YouTube for pill popping or something on camera. You never know what they're going to argue about these days. Hi Ash, hey Brisha. Hello, other people who are coming in. You got a headache? Yeah, me too. I went to the opticians yesterday and I swear my eyes had a better workout than I've had in the last six months yesterday. It was up and down and left and right and right and left and up and down and right and left and left and right and up and down and right and left and left and right and then it was the other eye. <laughs> and then it was the other eye again. And then it was the other eye. <laughs> and then I had to do it with the, the frames and then I had to do it without the frames. And then there was lots of, is this better or is this better? And I'm like, it looks exactly the same, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh anyway I'm really excited because these glasses are not cutting it at all anymore and I've also got a big scuff mark right across this lens so I can't even if they were any good I, I still can't really see out of them properly <sighs> because I managed to scratch the anti-scratch coating apparently the the expectancy life on anti-scratch coating is approximately eight and a half years because that's how long I've had these lenses. <laughs> but I've got some new ones coming. I can't wait. I actually squealed. They were they were making fun of me because I was I have it's always a problem because of my double vision. It's always a problem with you know. First off, I have to explain to them that I'm used to the double vision. As long as it's clear, I don't have a problem with it. It's when it's fuzzy that it causes a problem and it makes my eyesight worse than it actually is. Um, but she was a newly qualified optician and she said, I've actually heard of that and I know about it. And she looked through my notes and she said, I bet you were told for years that you couldn't possibly have double vision because it's only in one eye. And I was like, yes, I was. You can't see two of everything with one eye. She went, yes, you can. That's old. That's old. She went, I'm like, okay. <laughs> she was, She looked about 12. She was really cute. She, that, she wasn't cute. She was cute. She was absolutely stunningly beautiful. But she was, she was so cute because she was tiny. And she looked about 12. And she was really young. And she was like, I nearly qualified. You're only my ninth customer. I'm very excited. <laughs> it's my first full-time week. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're so adorable. But yeah, she went through everything. And then, of course, at the end, they hand you this whopping great pair of like steampunk goggles with all the different adjustments on, right? <laughs> and she handed them to me. She put them on and she went, okay, now hold this piece of card in front of you where you would normally work. Because I was, I was stressing to her, it's not for reading, it's for work. Because I don't really actually read that much. I do audiobooks, obviously. And I went, oh! <laughs> like, literally, like that. <laughs> Fucking, it looks really clear! Oh, my God! <laughs> and I was so excited. <laughs> so they were taking the mickey out of me. They're like, we don't normally get that from people who already wear glasses. <laughs> like, yeah, but <laughs> I can see up close and distance now. <laughs> you can do both. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, so my new glasses will be here in, uh, they said eight to ten days because it's just single vision glasses. And I've got to have a separate pair for driving, but just for driving. So she's told me to um, get the reading pair, uh, get a driving pair, get them like, she told me initially to just buy one, get one free or shop around websites and get one really cheap just to make sure that the prescription's okay. So I picked up a pair of reading glasses 
which I may have or may not have purchased because A, everybody I showed them to said they were really cute and they suited me, but also they're called Raven. <laughs> and I was like, mm, I kind of like that. <laughs> um, but then uh, I also, so those were £30 with all the, the reading things and stuff and I've got my my filters and stuff on them. And then I found another company that was doing, um, it's actually on Instagram actually, uh, a pair of glasses, your first pair of glasses with them for five pounds. And I thought, that's gonna be a scam, but okay, let's go. What they actually meant was, the lenses are free with regular anti-scratch, anti-glare. The, um, no the lenses are free clear lenses are free the frames were 20 27 pounds but the frames were free if you just paid the five pound postage and those will take 14 to 21 days um but for a fiver you know that means i've got a spare pair yeah she told me not to get transition lenses she told me to get specifically a pair that were for reading that I would wear in my normal day to day for base. She said basically anything between you and the TV. Um, and then I have another pair that I only wear for driving. Which is basically without all the reading stuff. So they're technically single vision lenses, but it's actually worked out cheaper. I've got two pairs coming of reading glasses um for sorry i bought the i've got a pair of reading glasses that were 30 pounds all in and i've got the driving set that were only a fiver because she actually said to me save up and look around shop around for a place that will do you the polaroid reactor light ones that should cost you about £80. Get a really big pair so that you've got automatic sunglasses, which I think is an excellent idea. But even if I do that, everything together is still less than the £238 I paid for this pair eight years ago. <laughs> and the cheapest pair they had in store was £42, which is twice the price of the ones I've been able to buy online. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm all for supporting your high street and normally I do but when it's when money's at a pinch and I I can get three pairs of what I need for less than half the price of the one pair that I would have paid for there it's not really a contest is it you can't really um... but the driving ones I actually ended up paying paid 10 pounds for them because I added on the driving option which is the anti, there's one that's anti-glare and there's one that's specifically for driving that stops the flare from lights and wet roads and all that kind of stuff. I can't remember what it's called. Risha will know, she'll tell me. Risha's optician, so she actually knows what she's talking about. Unlike me, who just wears glasses and is impressed when she can read. Anyway, let's get going, shall we? That's uh, my update for today. Uh, po class is doing well. Anybody who wants to join the Poe class, here's Katie, excellent. Katie, get your pen and paper out or whatever you're using. I need you to write down everybody in the chat. So if you are in the chat, even if you don't normally chat, please at least say hello so Katie knows you're here because we're going to do a giveaway today. Yay! Who doesn't love a giveaway, right? Um... Basically, we're going to be giving away a place on the Edgar Allan Poe class, the Halloween class. If you have already purchased your place on the class, then I will do you a Hall uh, tarot reading during October instead. And you can give your free place away to somebody else. So either a friend or recycle it back into, the, into another chat or whatever. You just let Katie know what you want to do. Um, so if you've already paid for a place on Halloween Chronicles, 
because you've used your discount codes and you happen to win the free place, I will give you a free tarot reading in October instead during the class and you can either give the free place back to go to somebody else in another chat next week or you can nominate somebody who you want whoever you want you can give it to a friend you can give it to somebody else in the chat whatever you want to do okay does that make sense if you're on instagram you can even run your own giveaway on instagram with that free place as long as you let katie know what you're doing that's not a problem <laughs> class opens on the 25th if you want to sign up go to my website link is here romanysrealm.org.uk information is already also down below hello to everybody who likes to lurk i'm sorry i don't like calling people out who lurk but you know at least just say hi just so that we know you're here otherwise you won't get a chance to potentially win the giveaway so yeah, the high street stores are overrated for glasses. There's no reason that a pair of glasses should cost you £238 just for the basic pair. And that was literally just that the frames themselves when I bought these were only £16. And when I had the lenses replaced with exactly the same lenses, um, I had to pay another £75 for the lenses. And I used the same frames because the frames were okay. So, yeah. But it'll be nice to be able to wear my glasses up here and be able to look at the computer and down here. Because at the moment I can't do that. I have to kind of sit with my glasses across my eyes so that I can look down here and up there. But anyway. So once again, if you missed it at the top of the show, we're doing a giveaway. A place on the Halloween Chronicles class. If you've already purchased your place, that's fine. You can have a free tarot reading instead and you can give your free winning away to somebody else in chat, somebody else that you know that you think would like to do the class, or you can even run your own giveaway on Instagram or something to do instead to, for somebody to come and join you. That's entirely up to you. Just let Katie Shesko know what you're doing if that's what you decide to do. Winner will be announced at the end of the stream. And I will mention it again, and I, Katie will mention it again during the during the stream. So, Katie's taking names, and at the end, we'll just take a random number, and that number will win. You're in charge of that. You know that, right, Katie? <laughs> Actually, well, Katie, if Katie writes all the names down in Excel then I can do a random number.org and she can tell me who the who the number is can't she that's the easy, is that the easiest way to do it Katie or you can do the number it doesn't really matter as long as we know who it is by the end okay <laughs> today we have music by said Katie Shesko there's her link go give her a follow her music is available as an album it's beautiful. She also allows people to use it for music videos if you contact her. Only if you contact her, though. You have to have licensed permission. Otherwise, YouTube will copyright notice it. So if you want to use her video, her music as well, you have to contact her directly to do a, a release form. Um, go give her a follow. Go buy her album. Follow her on Twitch as well. She streams, what days is it? Tuesdays and Fridays, Katie. And pretty much any other day that she feels like. She also plays Animal Crossing on Twitch. So, yeah, go give her a follow. <sighs> Today I have... These arrived on my doorstep this morning. I purchased the subscription. Am I shouting? I'm a bit deaf in one ear. Tell me if I'm too loud. Um... <clears throat> I purchased the subscription packs this month from Sticky Box because as soon as I saw what was coming out in the September boxes, I was like, I have to have that. Uh, and I've left my subscription running for now. I'm going to look at the, Chris the October boxes. They give you the option to cancel be before the 4th of October if you don't want them. Um, so I will wait and see. But at least if I'm already signed up, I'm guaranteed a pack. 
Tuesday, Friday and Saturday she streams officially. There you go. So I bought the cute pack and I bought the retro pack. Which one would you like to see first? Tell me now. Waits for lag. It's all right, is it, Resh? Okay, thank you. My mic is quite a long way away. I moved it because I, I noticed on some of the things it was because I don't have a... I call them spit filters. I don't know what they're actually called. <laughs> the disc things that... Pop filter, that's what it's called, a pop filter. Um, I don't have one of those, so I always put my microphone way back and then just turn the sound up. It gives a better better sound, I think, it, than me just shouting into the microphone. Five, four, three, two, and one. Retro, 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 retro. Okay, retro pack, pack first it is then, I guess. I can't believe you want to see the retro pack. The, the cute pack is always really cute. That's why it's called the cute pack. Anyway. So September, and don't forget, if you're not a member of Sticky Box, you can go and buy the month box. Just go and look up old boxes. Or if you sign up, I think now until the 20th, I think, they still allow you to get the September box. Check the terms and conditions. Um, but you can still get the September box. So if this really grabs you, go and get it. Ooh. I turned the envelopes over so you can't see my address, obviously. Is this cool? Nice. Ooh, the other side is the theme for this. So there's more stickers. I've been putting these in my A5 file effects because I'm not paying their prices for a, a binder when I've already got one. So the other side. I like that that sticker that's really cool okay so on this side let's have a look at this this looks like a patch oh um pip sticks is pretty good i found it was a little bit too cute for me i like their stuff it's very well done and i've done pip sticks unboxings before um they've very kindly sent me um promotional packs and stuff like that and they do do a really good job it's just not my kind of thing but these, I love the fact that you can literally, um, my off screen, sorry, there we go. Did I move the camera while I, while I put that thing over there? Um, yeah, I love the fact that you can literally, four days before it's due out, you can decide if you want to sign up or not. So, this is really cool. <laughs> A skull. We're very into skulls at the moment, obviously, because of the Poe class coming up. It's all Poe's and Poe skulls and ravens. Actually, I'll keep that out because I'm gonna I'm gonna use that in a minute. We've got a pad of paper, which is cute. It's got a bat and it's all like ink work type thing. I haven't found a thing that tells me who the artist is yet. Crimson pins. Crimson Pins is the artist for the patch. Etsy and Instagram. All of their artists seem to be on Etsy and Instagram. They seem to go around asking people to do packs for them or something. Or people submit packs, I don't know. I, would, I do wish they would make these into post-it notes. But also, it doesn't take two minutes to grab one of those rollers and just whip through and go duh, 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 and then it's a pack of post-it notes, right? Plus, that's kind of what Prit Stick's for, so I really like that. I'll use that, definitely, especially with the Poe class coming up. That's going to be a good one for using decorations and things. It's an odd size. I would have preferred it if it was that way, like with this coming down here and then the bat over here. That would have made more sense could used as a postage label or something then no september won't go out up for individual sale and until it's no longer a box so if you sign i think 
you have to check what the dates are but I'm pretty sure it's the 20th is the cutoff date so if you sign up before the 20th you'll get this pack this month but if you sign up after the 20th you get the October pack and after the 20th is when the September pack goes to old boxes does that make sense but you have to check the cutoff date because I'm not exactly sure it, where it is it might be different for different countries you see because I had to click the link for being in the UK so double check I like this paper though I like the fact that it's cream that's a really nice touch these look cute oh they're gold they're silver Ooh, ooh! it looks like there's two of them the other side look he's all he's not just silver he's glittery silver <gasps> that is stunning artwork oh they're different they're different aren't they beautiful <gasps> these are gorgeous they're kind of like book plates but not really and i don't know if they're stickers or cards or i think they're just cards but still beautiful it ends on 7th right so the 7th is when September's box goes to October's box but if you sign up after the 4th I think it is you automatically get October's box because I signed up on the 4th and it said you've you signed up do you want to sign up for the August or September box? It actually asked me which one I wanted. Oh, I didn't put those back in. Oh, I don't suppose I need to, but this is beautiful. I'm really liking this. Look at those, look at those stickers. I love those stickers already. Oh, I recognise that. That's Mary Searing. It is Mary Searing. MarySearingArt.com. She's also on Instagram. And Etsy. These are gorgeous. Look at these. Oh, they're washi tape too. They're, so they're washi type stickers. We've got emerald on it, onyx, agate, diamond, amethyst, and liger, liger, liger. Cody! <laughs> L I G. U-R-E, the Libra stone, whatever it is. This one is amethyst for Sagittarius, by the look of it. This one is, I don't really know what that is supposed to be. I can't really tell. I can't tell what that is either. I can't tell what these ones are, but this one is definitely an archer, and this one is a pair of scales, so... We've got the, we've got two different hands. So we've got palm reading hand, and then we've got the astrological hand. So what they call the bracelet of life. This is different playing cards in the wheel of astrology. And oh, that's interesting. I wonder what that's about. I'll have to play with that later and see what that's about. Because if that's playing cards, then that relates to tarot as well. I'll have to find out where that comes from. If it's a legit one or if it's just a, a made-up illustration or whatever. But even if it's a made-up illustration, if sometimes it can still be useful. Depends how you use them. There's another one. Oh, Leo, Sapphire. And Jasper. I can't really tell what that is unfortunately oh that's a teapot that's a teapot for agate that's definitely a lion i don't know what the rest of them are they're just squares with weird designs around them uh the phrenology thing again with astrological uranus neptune saturn mars etc astrophrenological chart cool and then this one is colors with astrology and the playing cards 
and the houses for the astrological wheel so you could use the astrological wheel in conjunction with that that would be really interesting oh we're gonna have to play with these i will for class and not to give out because that's not fair obviously you can buy these individual sheets usually from sticky club once the box is is no longer shipping um but at some point i will see if i can find original copies because these look like they're old copies of things that have got golden overlays on them they've been redesigned rather than original illustrations so i'll try and find the originals or just photocopy these in black and white so i can show them in black and white without the reflections and we'll look at them in class and see if there's any because it's always fun to look at this kind of stuff and go oh is there anything in that can you can you combine the two because all of it's just made up stuff in the at the end of the day, you know. Anyway, there's that one. And then we've got, oh, these are cool. These are also washi tape stickers. <laughs> Mothman. <laughs> Mothman creeping around with a, a shmee. Oh, the raven. The raven on the writing desk. Why is a raven like a writing desk? Oh, books, spirits. What's that one say? No, I'll have to tell you what that one says when I get my new glasses. The hand, reading the hand. Ghosts coming out of phonographs. Ghosts coming out of mirrors. Skeleton in the closet. Oh, these are cool. I like these. These are really, really cool. These are going to be awesome. <gasps> Haunted houses! Ah! <laughs> I'm so glad they've brought these out in in September instead of October because now I've got some stuff that I can use for October that I already know I've got. It's There's nothing more annoying than getting halfway through October and then you get all your Halloween goodies. These are really cool. These are like gothic buildings and stuff. Very nice. Looks like the charmed house there, that one. Or it reminds me of the Charmed House. I don't think it is the Charmed House, but it reminds me of it. And bats. Very cool. Okay. Ooh. Potraits. <laughs> They're all skeletons. Aren't they cute? So this has got to be crimson ink as well, because that's the same design, isn't it? Is it crim crimson pins? Sorry. Not crimson ink. Crimson pins. Because that's the same design. And these are like see-through. So they're they're kind of semi-transparent. They're almost like black semi-transparent vinyl. They're not washi tape. They're but they're see-through. These are very, very cool. I'm really liking this pack. I was a bit I like the like, Alice in Wonderland pack. I've looked at their other packs and I'm a bit yeah but i like like two sheets but the rest of them i wouldn't use oh these are mary's mary siren till death do us part she does very she's a little bit like brett Man manning she does like um all this victoriana spooky witchy stuff it's awesome very seancey type art I like that one with the wolf coming out of the hands. That's cool. And little skeleton. She always puts so much detail. There's like skeletons and ghosts and ca a candle up there. And there's a wolf coming out of her hands. And there's a little skeleton head there. And there's like roses and stuff. Oh, the more you look at these, the more you see. They're fascinating. This is a bat. See, initially that just looks like a collar with a necklace, but it's actually a bat with the moon. She's got candles in her hair. That looks like a skull, but it's actually two rabbits and a witch's hat and a load of candles and a floral wreath. These are fantastic. Oh, I'm very happy with this box. And then this one, let me...
Oh, it's there. Let me grab my book. This is a clear set, so. But they're gold, silver, gold. Are they silver or gold? They're gold. Oh, they're copper, actually. And that's hard to see those on there as well. Is it actually, it might actually be easier to see them on there. So we've got a planchette Ouija. We've got a Ouija. Can't remember what that one's called. Hands with a planchette, an eye. Moon, yes and no globe. Are you there? So it's all very seance -y type, Victorian type stuff. Which isn't directly Poe related, but I'm so going to be able to use this in my Poe book. Uh, what I'm planning to do for Halloween Chronicles, I have purchased, purchased a new one of these, which is the big, it's not huge, it's just the comfortable size B5. Yeah, B5. Sketchbook from C. Whites. I it's um, 250 by 190 millimetres, 140 GSM, 70 pound paper. Doesn't say how many pages there are, never does. Never does. But there's one, two, three, four, five, six sheets per signature, and there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 60, 120 sheets, I think. It's pretty good. And it's cartridge paper. It takes um, watercolour fairly well. And they don't have a stupid page at the beginning, which I love. <laughs> so I'm going to use the whole of this book because... What I plan to do is turn the whole thing into a Poe book. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the stuff in in class, obviously, which I've already told you about. See previous things or see the link down below to go and read about what we're doing in class. Uh, we're basically doing three autobiographical sections, three poems, two short stories and one much longer story um, and a true crime all through October uh, but we're going to be continuing it into November with Povember which is going to be a series of prompts that you can just play with so if you've already finished the class you can play with them using the same tips and tricks that we've used in the class about how to use a sketchbook and come up with ideas and if you haven't finished the class then you've got extra four weeks to work on the class because I never get to finish my class otherwise so I figured this was an easy way to do it. And then I can just do. OK, see you, Jen. Thanks for joining us. You will be entered into the giveaway. Don't worry. Um, yeah, so I can fill this book because what I plan to do is write out some of the poems. The short the stories obviously won't even in my writing probably won't fit in here. But I thought I would do some of the poems and decorate them and stuff like that. And then this will be a full book of just Poe, which would be awesome. I'm going to decorate the cover and everything. Anyway, sorry, I got sidetracked there. Yeah, so that's the the other side September sticky box unboxing. I love this set. I'm so impressed with this set. I'm almost tempted to go back and get another one when they do the uh, when it goes to October. Because this is right up my alley. I will use every single one of these stickers. I can't... In fact, the only one of them that I'm kind of... Yeah, I'm not... Maybe not sure is that one. But because it's a patch, I will absolutely use it. Because I'll put it on a sketchbook or something. So that's really cool. Here's a tip for being able to see what your stickers are. Especially on these clear sheets. What I do is I turn them back to back. Like that. So you can see them. Uh, actually, those two will work better together, and then this one on the back of here. And then when you pull them out, you can see 
what your stickers you've got really easily actually those would be better on the back of there let's put that one there and that one there that'll work better so I can there now I can see what stickers are oh, I should have done that in the first place look and they're beautiful they're not gold they're bronze they're like copper but it's a really easy way of seeing what your stickers are if you've got translucent sheets little tip there oh I'm loving these oh they know they go in the other side okay so that's the retro pack the other side I also thought I'd purchased the Naturalist pack. Maybe that's coming out after the subscription box. There's one called a Naturalist that I thought I'd bought. Oh, this is this is the cute pack, and this is looking really cool too. There's, there's no paperclip or shiny or why? shiny I know only dogs can hear me now but seriously is it that hard to find a spooky paper clip like a witch's hat or something Ooh! I'm po-pairing <laughs> ah, boom boom thank you for the super chat Ashley that is a very nice cup of coffee you've bought me there which I shall have I promise you because it's pumpkin spice latte season, of course. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. I mean, I have some cute paper clips of bats and stuff that I can put in here, but it's kind of annoying. Oh, that's adorable. Again, this is this is paper. It's not. Yeah, it's always a paper pad. It's never sticky notes. Wish there were sticky notes. This has got a little little ghosty and two little pumpkins with a little spider on, and it's got a little pumpkin. And a little rabbit thing. And I don't know if the rabbit's smoking a cigar or cutting out a pumpkin. But he's got like a pen thing in his hand or something. I think he's cutting out his pumpkin. And then we got another pumpkin with a little cute like kitty or I don't know if it's a cat or a bear. But maybe a cat. I don't know. I think it's a cat. When they do the nose with the two bits, it's a cat, isn't it? And when it's a nose with the W, it's a bear. Okay, and they're kind of a peachy colour, which is... I'm loving this! Oh my god! Look at that! It's a Maddie sticker! Give me treats. And then a kitty sticker! Yellowy! Spooky! Oh, spooky! Like sticky! <laughs> I get it, I get it! I love this give me treats one. That's so maddy. I'm sore about there not being a paper clip though. I like the paper clips and the patches. You'd think they could do like a witch's hat or something, for goodness sake. Oh, these are adorable. Oh my life. I did actually go through these because this cute pack nearly always has clear stickers, so I did go through. Oh, that I did go through and turn them so that I could see them easy. Trick or treat. We got two little trick or treat envelope type things. So they're like um, they're like the money envelopes, but you could use them for journaling easily. <laughs> oh, cute kitty cat! I'm not huge. I like cats. I don't usually go hugely into cats, but she's a witch cat, so that's totally okay. I like cats, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not a, I'm not anti-cat in any way. I, like, I used to have two of them. These are adorable. Look at this. Got a death cat, a bat cat, a boo ghost. This one's got little skelly bones. <laughs> skelly bones. Uh, Jen illustrations. Jen with two N's. Illustrations. It's got an at, so she's on Instagram. R.I.P. with a little paw. <laughs> it's a little zombie cat. Oh my god. Kitty on a pumpkin. 
the witch cat, a candy apple cat, a pumpkin cat, a mummy cat. Oh my god, these are so cute. Eye candy. A little spider. Oh, these are adorable. Oh, <laughs> a little baby ghost scaring a kitty ghost. Boo. <laughs> I don't know if you remember me talking about decoupaging. I needed to order something from Amazon, found a small paper mache dragon that you can decoupage. Oh, cool. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Okay, so there's that one. And then this one is like the paper. Like the um, the paper pad. Doesn't say who the illustrator is on it. They're so inconsistent with who the... So this one's got the name on, but this one doesn't. So I, you can't tell if it's the same illustrator or not. So this one has... Oh, it's Harry Potter themed by the look of it. Because he's got little Harry Potter glasses and a, hog, a Gryffindor scarf. And he's got his broom and his head, his little Hedgewig owl. <laughs> it's adorable. And a little ghost. I wonder if that's nearly headless Nick. Levy Corpus. corpus. <laughs> we got a little... I don't know if it's a cat or a dog. It's got straight things, so I think it's, I think it's a dog, that one. And he stood as a little bear with stood on some pumpkin and he's throwing pumpkin spice into his teacup. Candy corns. Eyeball milkshake type things. Ghosts, pumpkin pie. With a little ghost. Ghost skull. Eyeballs. A little <laughs> a rabbit going rawr. <laughs> with a little vampire cloak like a bat. A little, I think it looks like, I don't know if it's a child or a lamb. It's got ears like a lamb, so it might be a lamb. With a crocodile head on. <laughs> a cute little dog with a death outfit and a little bird. Oh my God, these are adorable. There's the cat with the pumpkin again. We've got a little, a little devil rabbit with horns and a tail. And a little pitchfork. A teddy all wrapped, being wrapped up in toilet roll. <laughs> oh God, these are so cute. Trick or treat and they're pulling out the candy out of the bag to give to the spider. Oh, and there's little serial killer Teddy. Is he Chucky? Is that Chucky's outfit? I'm not into Chucky, but he's got red hair and dungarees and a stripy shirt. Isn't that Chucky with a knife? And a little bear with a cream cake. So presumably he's going to cut the cream cake. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. These are really cute too. Donuts. Again, no illustrator name. So we got jelly eyeballs, a mummy. A, these are like the voodoo donuts, aren't they? A spider's web. A vampire, a zombie, a ghost, a bat, uh, Jack Skellington and Mr. Pumpkinhead. And there's two of each. They're cute. And then this one is, that's more my sort of thing. Little red-headed witch and nice to see some black witch representing there. Now, and I don't mean this in a rude way, so don't. Don't get all uppity and take it wrong, okay? However, I would not be likely to use these stickers because they don't represent me and that's what I normally use stickers for. So, but I do use the red ones because my hair is either red or black most of the time. So I'm quite happy to use these. But this doesn't isn't self-representative for me. So if you are a black-skinned witch and you would like my three black-skinned stickers, please let me know and I will send them to you. Because there's no, there's no point in me keeping them here and them not being used. So if you are a witch of colour and you would like those three stickers, there's one with a, she's got like a tattoo of a, 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 a web, a skull and a, a bat and a star. And she's got fire coming out of her, her hands. And she's got like a little jumpsuit with stars all over it and fishnet tights and boots. 
And this one has fishnet tights and boots and shorts and a stripy top and she's eating a skull candy apple. I'm just describing them because it's really hard to see the dark ones. Uh, and she's got long hair. The, these two have both got long hair and a witch's hat. And then this one has a little mini Wednesday dress on with fishnets and little witchy boots and a witchy hat. And she's reading a witch book. And she, th this one and this one are wearing glasses. So, yeah. If you're here in stream and you're a witch of colour, let me know. First person to contact Katie. I will send them to. I'll just pop them in an envelope to you and hopefully they'll get there before October. <laughs> um, so we've got, looks like slugs and snails or something. Oh, it's leeches. Leeches. Little go oh, they've got foil on, look. It's not picking up on camera, but they're foiled. Like this witch, you can't really tell, but she's got foiled glasses, copper foil glasses. Again, it doesn't say the illustrator. It's so annoying when they do that. We've got little black cats and we've got black bats and we've got moons and clouds and it's a spooky witch. One on a bike, a broom, a... Actually, the way she's sat, she could easily be placed onto that broom. So could she. That's kind of cute. Some of them have their hands up, but they're empty, like this one. So you could put a bottle in her hand or a bone in her hand. That's kind of kind of fun. The basket there is see-through, so you could put stuff in behind the basket as well. Bottles, magic spell, spine, alchemy. These are book spines, I think. Bones, stars, all the little stars and stuff are cut outs as well. And a web. They're adorable. I really like these illustrations. They look like they are two different people. And I wish they put the names on them because it's annoying. Oh my goodness me. Look at these little black cats. Okay, so this is by Aurigai. I hope I'm saying that right. Aurigai Art. A-A-U-R-I-G-A-E. And that's Instagram. These are really cute. This is a little black cat. They're completely matte stickers. We've got one with a death. I think that's a person with a death mask. Like a skull mask. And it looks like death with the cat. Cat playing with chemistry. Cat sat on the roof with the moon and some ghosts. Cats. Looks like they've got tails. So I'm going to assume that's cats. The cat with his head inside a deer skull. Uh, a cat with a paintbrush, that's cute. A cat looking at some kind of potion. I can't read what that says. This is why I need new glasses. I can't read what those that says either. Something, night, something, and love letter, love potions. Night, no, I can't read what that says. Night, something, and love potions. And he's got a little uh, quills, pot of quills. And then this one's a cat sat on a a, hat, a witch's hat with a, some flowers on it. This one, he's looking into the cauldron. And there's some spooky kind of weird fish, koi type things coming out of the cauldron. And then this one, he's all dressed up with his witch's outfit. <laughs> oh, they're cute. And then we've got more. We're not done yet. <laughs> Aren't these adorable? These are like little kids dressed up. Again, doesn't say who the illustrator is. This is like little devils and witches. Oh, is he a sloth? He looks like he could, he's got little claws. He could be a sloth. That makes me think he looks like a sloth. He's got a vampire, a witch, a Harry Potter, uh, a pumpkin, cuddling a pumpkin, a little devil, a a candy coma, a, a mummy wrapped up in toilet roll, coming out of a pumpkin, there's various bags and sweets and lollies and stuff, a witch with a broom, a different colour witch cauldron, a little devil in different colour, a vampire in a different colour. So they're the same stickers but they're different colours. 
Oh, they're adorable. Yeah, he is a little sloth. That's really unusual. I like that. Sloths are cool. We've done the cats already. So that's that's those. Let me put those there because you can see them a bit better. And then we've got these. Now these are not, these are a bit pastel goth for me. However, kind of like them. <laughs> that's come off. Where's that come off of? Oh, it's there. They're tr semi-translucent again. And we've got pale green, pale blue, lemon and pale pink. And we've got, they're like masquerade masks. So we've got a ghost and a skeleton and a cat and a creepy skull and a bunny head and an owl head and a teddy bear head and a dog head. <laughs> uh, not sure what that is. A bat, another creepy cat head, a mouse, a rabbit. <laughs> These are cute. <laughs> Like I said, I'm not normally into pastel things, but they're a whole head. They're a whole set of different skulls and masks. How can I not use those? They're adorable. Oh, they've really outdone themselves with these boxes. These are fantastic. But Sticky Club, if you are listening, and I know you're not, but if you are, one, please do post-it notes. Nobody likes bits of paper. Do, do post-it notes, okay? And two... Put the flipping illustrators on the, all the stickers, not just random ones. <clears throat> I mean, there's, I suppose this is a chance some of them could be in-house designs. But if that's the case, just put in-house designs. You know, this one's got the name of the, the artist. This one just says Sticky Club. This one just says Sticky Club. This one says Sticky Club, and it's also got the name of an artist. Consistency, guys consistency or at least put in just a little card that tells us who's done what because these are adorable Ugh. anyway rant over sorry I, it, it annoys me when legitimate companies are not supporting artists by putting their names on things I mean if it's an in-house design just say it's an in-house design But it's so random. <laughs> oh, anyway, these are adorable. I'm sore about not getting a, a cute paper clip, but that's okay. I like the stickers. I will use every single one of them. If there are no takers, you'd like the stickers, Pamela. I think that sounds okay, unless somebody's already contacted Katie. I don't see a problem with that. So just Katie will get back to you. But as long as nobody messaged her before you did, before you posted there, that's fine. Just let her know your address and I'll send them across. I'll pop in one of these two because I'm probably not going to use both of those. So you can have one of those as well. And I'll give you a few sheets of this too because, again probably not going to use all of it so if I'm sending something in the post I might as well chuck a few extra bits and pieces in for you all right so there's the two sticky packs for September knocked it out of the park those are stellar okay so the next thing on the agenda is I got myself one of these we knew it was coming didn't we because I bought myself the Moleskin bullet journal so let's do that first. I'm still using this. This is good. This is good. So, oh, that's my receipt from yesterday. I need to put that into my book. So I don't think I've got anything to update on. Oh, I've got some, f I've had it, had to add. Um, I had to add in a little thing down here on my VIP stuff. Um, forward planning for 2021 um, because my blood test that I'm supposed to have next week is supposed is being moved forward 
because of COVID, they're giving me an extra six months and saying, don't come into the hospital, go and get it done in April, which is awesome. Um, and I also need to put, so that's Maddie's meds and then opticians, opticians, next appointment, 15, 9, 2022. So I'll just put that in the important information thing because I don't really need to... Um, So I'm going to tick this because that means I've photographed it and I will just um, there is my most adorable paper clip paper stapler thingy in the world look at that thing isn't it just adorable it is so freaking cute this thing so I'm just going to put that in there. That's my receipt for my optician for my glass my glasses test. Uh. Okay, maybe maybe work would be good. working properly it usually does might have put the wrong size staples in I've done that before okay look so there's my receipt I've done some pre-planning for additional expenses so like stuff like I've got to pay for Vimeo in November and stuff like that so I've just planned that out in pencil <sighs> here we are with what we're doing at the moment Oh shoot, I didn't do yesterday. Did I do yesterday's? Did I do it last week and I just haven't put it up? No, I haven't done <gasps> I haven't done yesterday's PDF. Post-it note, give me a post-it note. I'm gonna need a post-it note. Why can't I never find a damn post-it note? Where are they all? Seriously? Oh, there they are. Oh, PDF. Sorry guys. That's because I was out all day yesterday and when I got home I had, a, I had a headache. PDF for Tuesday. It's late. Yeah. I'll do that later. Sorry. See, this is why you check your bullet journal every day. So... last week well oh, yeah well the ninth to the ninth the first to the ninth got some notes there I wasn't using that space so I just stuck a sticker in it it's one of my Alice in Wonderland sticky box stickers uh, I'm still using my coding so my two boxes mean the left hand page is done and the right hand page is done and if it's got a cross through it means there's no reason for anything to be done on that page these stickers mean that there's something related to that in that column. So in this column, there's something related to meds. So if I scan down here, prescription due. And that was sorted. So that's been done. Something about the car. Oh, look, car dead again. Something about the car in notes. Oh, that's what's happening with that. Oh, I need another meds sticker in there as well. Might as well go through this while I'm here because people have told me before they find it useful to see how I actually use my bullet journal. So here we go, med sticker. Don't know where these came from, the freebies. I just look on Pinterest and look for free printable stickers. And unfortunately I take so long to use them that I don't know who I got them from. I don't know how everybody remembers where they got, oh, I purchased this from this and this from this and this from this. And I'm like, dude, I can't remember where I bought coffee yesterday. So this has got stuff about my blood test. 
got some sketches. This is all finished, so those two. I know that page is finished because that's got two of these here. Katie's back. Okay. <sighs> I didn't know Katie was away. We've been talking to you, Katie. Okay, so Katie wasn't actually here, so I'm going to assume that nobody contacted Katie because Katie wasn't even here. So Pamela, Pamela Mazoki needs to, I need to get her address, please. I'm going to send her the, there's some Black Witch stickers on here, so I'm going to. It might be worth just checking the email just in case somebody emailed it, but I'm pretty sure there's just Pamela, so. Uh, this is all Halloween Chronicles prep, which I don't have a massive amount in here at the moment because this is all final stuff. I have another book. The music I'm play listening to, Nicole, is this one here. It is Katie Shesko, who is in chat, playing the Flute Gaming Chronicles. And her album is available. Go follow her on YouTube. Give her a follow on Twitch as well. And you can purchase her music wherever you can purchase music. <laughs> um, so anything to do with Halloween Chronicles, I just put some Halloween washi tape up at the top of the page. Just because it makes it nice and easy to see what's what plus I got some really cool Halloween washi tape so um, but I've been pinning these together with my cute little pumpkin pumpkin grin clip so I've got this is the like I said I've got a, I've got a composition notebook where I scribble notes when I'm working and, and it's virtually illegible this is where I put things that I tick off and track and all that kind of stuff so this is like this first section we're doing on portraits, the second section on poetry, the potrifying tales and the police procedurals. And it's all broken up into what we need, I need to do. So we've got the audio book, the analysis, you know, and the prompts and all that. And I'm writing it all down as I go. As I finish something, I write it in here so that I know when I've, I use this as a tracker to know when I've uploaded it because not all of it is finished and uploaded yet. Then I've got all my other notes that I'm doing. This is for scripting. Um, this is just other stuff like the Spotify playlist and text links and, you know, where to read the works online and all that stuff. And then I've got a timeline in here that I've done of his life. Which took forever, by the way. Uh, these are notes sketch notes from a class the other day this is a journal page I've kind of been adding things to I've got a really cool quote this is from an artist called Terrell Whitlack and she said on a human level there is no such thing as perfection but there is excellence and we should all strive for it where we can that's the full quote I only I only put half of it but Okay, so posting the vlog, that didn't happen. Doing the yard, that didn't happen either. It was too freaking hot yesterday. But we did put bins out. We didn't box stuff up. I've got to do some more of them. Well, we started, but we didn't get very far. <coughs> Parcels, didn't do that. Post stuff, I've been working on that. So clips, I didn't do that. Doctor's note. So again, a, a medical thing there. Opticians, I did the opticians. Um, I couldn't find a picture that had glasses on it, which was really annoying. So instead of using my optician's appointment, I used one with a face mask to show that I left the house because at the moment I'm only really leaving the house to walk the dogs and go to appointments. Um, I've got a few other things to write in there from last night. Errands, I did that, I did that. I need to book though that today. And I need to do the PDF after class. That's, that's it, that's all I've got in here at the moment. 
so I, I am using it I've just been you know I've not really done an awful lot since last week everything's a little bit on hold because the majority of what I'm doing is getting ready for a class which means everything else goes out the window basically all other planning goes somewhere that sells however having bought the bullet journal notebook from moleskin which i did a proper look through of this i think was it last week or the week before i can't remember but it's it's in my very recent i only got this a couple of weeks ago i then mentioned that they were starting to do medium size which is b6 slim this is the large size which is a5 slim so it's 18 centimeters tall um or eight seven and a half inches i think it is this doesn't have inches on so i can't tell you my, where's my where's my other my other one with inches on my other one where my other one? Oh, there it is here we go so this one is eight and a quarter sorry by five which is a five slim this one is seven by four and a half which is b6 slim and this is called a moleskin medium not seen these before they have been about on in europe but not in the uk these are fairly recent in the uk and these are 11 by 11 and a half by 18 i think yeah 11 and a half by 18 whereas these are 12 by 21 by 13 so there is quite a big difference actually i'm surprised how much difference there is now i am not a b6 girl but i'm also not an a5 girl either so i prefer the a5 slim and the a5 narrow to the a5 i find a5 is just too chunky um, and the fact that i've got small writing when i'm writing prose and i can already fit like 20 words on a line i don't want to do 30 words on a line i don't need it so this is a good size for me i do not like b6 for writing on again because it's a weird size but i did look at this and think well if i get it in the sketchbook i should be able to use it because again the this is the same ratio as the a5 slim the b6 slim is the same ratio which is an a4 <laughs> which is good uh, and i thought maybe i could see i haven't even opened it yet it's a sketchbook so i thought maybe i could use this maybe do the um, draw Halloween stuff in it and you know see how I get on with it I mean I already know I like the paper I already know what's you know the I already know that I like these ones the the large size and it's exactly the same it's just that this is a different size I don't like the pockets they're too small but I occasionally don't feel like lugging this around with me either um, especially when i'm sketching if i'm just going to be sketching like hand this is just a little bit too large to hold just in your hand whereas i felt like this one feels a little bit more like you could actually hold it like that quite comfortably and sketch without it feeling like overly does that make sense like if it's a bit bigger it kind of tips when you draw writing whereas I think I could sketch quite happily with that. So I thought I would try the, that as a sketchbook. Since I am already trying various sketchbook sizes, my current sketchbooks, I have, everybody will go, how many sketchbooks have you got? I've got two of these at the moment. I've got one over there that I'm doing random stuff in. This is gonna be specifically for Poe stuff. And this is the B five which is essentially double but not quite as high as this because obviously this is a slim so it's not quite as high but it's essentially the same size um i just like this size this ratio again it's the same ratio a4 is too tall and landscape it's too wide but uh, yeah I don't know anyway so I've got those I've got my big thick chunky this is actually an A5 sketchbook but it's not whoops 
for after lunch. Sorry. Um, it's not A5, it's half letter, so it's not quite as wide as an A5, because it's American size. It's the Art Adventures one. And this is the one that I started last year and I've just been gradually using. Um, I'm perfectly happy having multiple sketchbooks, so I have no problem with having many. I have, I obviously, my moleskin one I haven't actually opened. I've just got, since I was buying one anyway in this, I thought I might as well pick up another large size because I'm nearly done with my large one, which I don't have here. But you know what a moleskin large looks like. I've got this one, which is the landscape sketchbook which I started using as a bullet journal, but then I've turned it in, it's just gonna be a sketchbook now because I prefer this, uh, the Moleskin bullet. This was only a trial anyway, and I, yeah, I don't like it. But I do like sketching on this landscape type. I've also got a watercolor notebook that is exactly the same as this, but it's proper watercolor paper, which I'll be using for urban sketching and I've got my big massive fairly big stupid sketchbook that I've been working on my chameleons in and I will get back to these it's just that at the moment for what I need to do on this and my glasses are not cutting it that's why I stopped working on this I can't do detailed work like this without my glasses or until I get my proper glasses I'm going to use sketching and whatever other spooky stuff I get up to that's not Poe related in October. So, should we start by sticking that on there? Because that looks like that will work nicely. Oh, doesn't want to... Oh, is it? It's not an iron-on patch. No, it's stuck. Okay. right you've looked on Amazon and they look beautiful what looks beautiful you're firmly attached to your A5TN though yeah I, well I like my moleskin size TN I, I and that will come back I'm, it's just that I'm using I use lots of sketchbooks at this time of year because most of what I do is sketching at this time of year um, I'm gonna hang on to that so that I can Since it's in this book, I guess I could stick it in there, couldn't I? So I know where the pin came from, where the cover thing came from. There you go. Um, more spooky stuff. Let's stick one of these in, shall we? Why not? Yeah, that looks cute. Oh, I can't be doing with plastic bags everywhere. I don't know if these bags are recyclable. Anybody got sticky unboxing things? Oh, now do I want to put one of those or one of these? Because I do kind of like that as well. No, I'll stick with these. These I'll use these for my Poe book. Those will go in my Poe book. I'll probably use that in my Poe book as well, though I'm not, I'm not big on... Um, bookmarks but I'll probably use that in my Poe book because my Poe book is big whereas I don't think this really needs a bookmark beyond what it's already got plus this one's already got a bookmark and the other one doesn't so that makes sense doesn't it let's just stick that in there stick it there I am not one of those people who hangs on to stickers and stuff like they're precious. Stickers are made for using. I don't hang on to blank books either because they're too precious. Blank books mean nothing. Books only become precious once they're filled with stuff, in my opinion. So, you know, until you've actually used a sketchbook just a sketchbook there's plenty more 
and stickers are just stickers until you actually use them. And if I'm going to put them in my sketchbook, you know, it's not like I'm going to throw my sketchbooks away. Planners, sometimes I do get rid of planners, but I'm more likely to keep sketchbooks. Or I, I do keep sketchbooks, I never throw a sketchbook away. If I really hate a sketchbook, like hate the paper, I will take out what I've done with it, throw the sketchbook away and keep the pages that I've used. Um, but in that case, I would normally, you know, tear this out and keep it if, and reuse that if I wanted to, if I felt that that was necessary. What should we put on this one? Because this is going to be for Mab's Draw Halloween Club and these are very Mab-like. Let's put... I like her. She's She reminds me of Mab, actually. It's a little bit like Mab's style of sketching as well. So let's put her there. And let's put, where's my pen? Let's grab a pen. I want to, I know I've got a pen there. I want a pen that's easier to write with. Mabs Draw Halloween Club at Mab Graves and I did put a link down below as well if you're not familiar with Mab. Every October she does a Draw Halloween Club which is just spooky prompts which are cool. It's Halloween Halloween you know you get the idea um, but this year she's doing it specifically in with in mind people who are caring for Covid people or are what she calls Covid carers so people who are looking after people people who are working have been working full-time people who are homeschooling basically anybody whose life is severely impacted as a carer by covid and the situation and doesn't have time <laughs> to do anything else she's come up with all these different things um and she's put little like you don't even have to i think one of the prompts is cryptid and you don't even have to go and look it up she's done a little prompt sheet for you of what cryptids are and some examples and, and this that and the other she's gone over and above this year to just really make people's life easier and there's also three different versions you can do the 31 days you can do the once a week version or you can do the every other day version so you can do 31 prompts 15 prompts or five prompts depending on which oh she's fab go and give her a follow anyway and show her some love she does this every year for no um for, for nothing, you know, and she's really gone above and beyond this year to, to make it fun for people. So, Mab's Draw Halloween Club, Ma October 2020. Let's, uh... I find it so hard not to draw over the same line again. Anyway, that'll do. That's fun. Uh, I feel like this could do with a bit of sticky. So where are my Halloween washies? Got some Halloween washi. Bought this on Amazon. Yes, it's in my Amazon wish list. Amazon shop link is down below. <laughs> I think I'm going to put that across there like that. I think that'll be fun. Just stick that down so it doesn't come flapping up. Um, okay. So I'm just going to put my name and email in here. And I normally put my phone number in as well, but I do that after the session. Don't know what I'm going to put in there yet. But I will think of something. Maybe maybe a sticker in there. Maybe I'll put a sticker in there. 
that'd be fun. Um, what about these cute little stickers? Where are these cute little death stickers? I think that'd be fun in there, maybe. The little cute little rabbit. The, the cute little cat. He's not quite tall enough, is he? Uh, let's have a look. No. No, too small. Something a bit bigger. Too white. No. Ooh. Like these guys. Oh. The witchy cat, he's a bit bigger. He's white again though. He's got a white background, whereas these have Oh! A little flying witch. Let's put a little flying cat. Little flying cat witch, because then I can put her in the middle. That'll make more sense then. And let's put on there. Let's try this paper with ink. Ooh, it likes fountain pen. Spooky season. Spooky. Spooky spook. Season. There we go. I normally put a date started and everything, but since this is probably going to be for October 2020, mostly, I don't think I need to put any more. What else? What else? I think that's it for stickers. All those anyway. Gander at these. Uh, no. I've already used one of those, so. There's a more Poe. These are very Poe like because they're all Gothic Victorian type stuff. Those are very Poe like. Yeah, I think that's it for those. I like that sticker. Oh, if I put that over there, I could have put that corner sticker there. I don't really want to squish it in that side. Okay. Gimme treats. <laughs> I love that gimme treats one. Alrighty then. So, my tip for getting started in a sketchbook. Here's my tip for getting started in a sketchbook. First off, make it yours. So, stick something on the cover, stick something on here, make it yours. Put your name in it, and then completely ignore the first page and go to wherever the bookmark is. Because you know when you buy these, you've always got the bookmark in them, like that, right? So forget that, just open it wherever the bookmark is. And use that as your first page. That gives you a chance to break in the spine. Open all the pages flat, properly. Get it feeling like a bit of a sketchbook. And it makes it feel used. Change 
changed your cover twice. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, I miss I'm forgetting chat. Sorry, guys. How far back did I forget? How far back did I forget chat? Uh, quite a long way. B6 is a little shorter than A5 slim. Yes. Well, B6 is a bit shorter than A5 and thinner than A5. And B6 slim is basically the same ratio as A5 to B6 is the same ratio as A5 slim to B6 slim. Slim just means it's not full width. So a normal B6 would be out here somewhere, which is too square. I don't do square books. I've got a square sketchbook I've been using since, oh, 2010. Still haven't even close to finishing it. In fact, I, I don't think I'm even halfway through it. I, I hate sketching on square stuff. Peter Paul. Peter Pauper Press sells B6 journals that you like to sketch in. Yeah, they do nice paper, actually. They're hard to get here, the Peter Piper. Peter Piper. Peter Pauper books are hard to get here, but they do nice notebooks. It's your bullet journal TN, yeah. You looked on Amazon and they look beautiful. You just firmly attached to your A5. Oh, I read that one already. I think we, I think you were talking about the Peter Pauper books then. Okay. You couldn't use a TN because you'd go through them too fast. You'd go through one a day, Cody. A TN refill, you'd just go through like one a day. It'd be ridiculous. I've heard of the idea of getting a notebook and doing your bullet journal in a notebook for a while. As long as you date stuff and you know where to find it when you need it, there's no problem with swapping books whenever you feel like it. You could always get a small notebook, like this sort of size notebook, and just keep that in your handbag. So your actual bullet journal stays at home and gets big and chunky and you've got a little book that you carry with you. I was planning to use this as a sketchbook and also so when I when I go out and about I can just chuck this with me so if I want to sketch I can if I want to make notes I can whatever I want to do and then I don't have to carry my bullet journal and a sketchbook I don't really journal says Cody who has about 40 million books that she writes in every day Try to journal, then you stop, then you try again. Consider what you think is journaling, I would say. Because proper, jour proper journaling, I sat down and wrote about my day kind of journaling. I mean, that's the most I've done. Two pictures, two paragraphs and a quote. And that is since the beginning of September. That's journaling for me. But I've got loads of sketchbooks and I've got bullet journal, which is technically my planning, but it's still a journal. And I've got notes and I've got other stuff, you know, I just call it all my, my journal. <laughs> it's all journaling as far as I'm concerned. The only reason I call these sketchbooks is because they're specifically sketchbook paper. <laughs> if, it's a, if it's sketchbook paper, then I call it a sketchbook. But I just as I just as happily journal in my sketchbooks. I mean, and I don't journal that often in the sense of sitting writing. I mean, this is my sketchbook for earlier in the year, May 2020. So I I wrote on the first, the fourth. Again, a couple of photos, something I clipped out. I would consider that journal. Photos, you know, bits and pieces I want to keep. Um, and then we're into April that's April Art Challenge see I would consider that a journal page and this a sketchbook page but I just call it all a sketchbook and I don't really worry about it too much seventh, eighth, eleventh, fourteenth and I think that's all the journaling I did 
Yeah, now we're into June. And very quickly we're going to July. This paper feels damp. Yeah, that was when I started doing the some of the 100 heads. You know, don't... but I've got other pages that I've journaled in, that I've written in, but you know, what's journaling anyway? There's no journal police to say what a journal is or isn't. The only difference I have between a journal and a sketchbook is a sketchbook is specifically sketchbook paper. That doesn't stop me journaling in it. And it doesn't stop me sketching in a journal. I would consider this a journal, specifically a bullet journal. It doesn't stop me sketching in it. it. Doesn't stop me writing in it. it. Doesn't stop me planning in it. It's a bullet journal. People get too hung up on what is and isn't journaling. And, you know, oh, well, I only keep a commonplace notebook because I only write down quotes and things that I've heard. And I only occasionally sketch things. And, you know, well, surely that's a sketchbook too then, isn't it? So I think it's, I think it's, um, I don't know if disingenuous is the word I'm looking for, but I'm going to use it because it sounds good. <laughs> I think it's disingenuous to get so hung up on what book you're using and what type of book you're using and how big it is and, and this that and the other and what you're writing and how you're writing it and labeling it why don't you take all that energy that stresses about which you know this that and the other just use whatever book you feel like as long as you date it it doesn't matter and do whatever you feel like in whichever book whenever you want to and Put all that energy that you spend stressing about what book you're using and what type you're using and should I put it in this book or should I put it in that book or should I do it this way or should I do it that way? Just, the only, the only rules are, if you want to do watercolour, use watercolour friendly paper. <laughs> if you want to use fountain pen, use fountain pen friendly paper. And other than that, date everything. Apart from that, you know, just put all the stress and worry and, oh, but how do I do this? How do I do that? Just do it. Spend less time worrying about how to and just getting on with it because that's how you're... It's like developing a style in artwork. You don't develop a style in artwork. A style will develop from practice. So you don't go looking for a style or developing a style specifically. You just do stuff and a style will emerge. And you'll know you have a style when people start telling you, oh, I'd recognise your artwork anywhere. <laughs> a shady shop. Shady shops. Ooh. I'll have to go and read that a bit later. They moved to a new state, went retail, and kind of stopped responding to emails. Ooh, that's that's shady. At least have a, a thing on saying, I'm sorry, we're in the middle of moving. That's why we're not getting back to you. Don't forget, if you are here watching live... You need to at least say hello so we know you're here so that Katie can write down your name because at the end of the stream there's going to be a giveaway of a place on the Halloween Chronicles class coming up in October. If you are already signed up to do the Halloween Chronicles class I will do you a tarot reading instead and you can do whatever you like with your free place. You can give it to a friend, you can recycle it to give to somebody else who is here in the stream or you can do a giveaway on your Instagram or whatever. I, don't, I really don't care. Um, do whatever you want with it. <laughs> as long as you let Katie know. That's the rule. Whatever you do, you'll let Katie know. But you do need to say hello if you're here so that Katie knows to put your name down. Because if you don't comment, then we don't know you're here. But it's only in the live stream. And at the end of the live stream, we'll announce the winner. Even if they're not here, we'll announce the winner. And if you're not here, then you'll need to get in contact with Katie at this thing here. Sorry, my phone's going off. Don't know why my alarm's going off. <sighs> I know it's not, not the done thing to call out lurkers and that's not what I'm trying to do in any way, 
But you, if you want to be part of the giveaway, then you need to say hello in the chat. Just so that we know you're here. Leave a smiley face. I don't care. <laughs> Notebooks encourage pen to paper, no, what the, no matter what the rhyme or reason. Absolutely, Casey. Just enjoy them any way you can so you can look back on them and say, what the bloody heck was I on? Yeah, exactly. I get, I derive no end of joy from just going back through my old notebooks, reading some of my entries and thinking, girl. <laughs> and all the, all the, the, the pretentious teen scribbles about Kurt Cobain and all that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> well, it wasn't teen scribbles then, it was like, Angst, angsty 20 scribbles. <laughs> you know. Anyway. I'm going to do some... Maybe do some prep. So let's grab a sketch pen. Sketch pen. By which I mean a pencil. <laughs> let's grab a sketch pen. Sorry, I spat at the camera. Let's grab a sketch pen. By which I mean, mean a pencil. I'm losing it, I am, I tell you. Do you like my new lamp? It's a little bit glary when there's plastic about. Sorry about that. I like these matte protectors for that because I can put them there and they don't glare. But um, what do you think of the lighting? Is it better? I got myself a posh. Look. It's even got a shield on it so it doesn't give me a headache. And it's adjustable and it's daylight it's not it's not a studio light it's daylight i'm gonna put it back where it was now there we go because if i have it at just the right height it um it doesn't glare on my screen because of the shields and it also doesn't give me a headache because i can't actually see the light i can only see what's coming down out of the light if that makes sense the strip itself can give you a headache but i can't see that I've blinded myself now. <laughs> I did fiction writing and suddenly was very tired and took a nap and overslept. Hi Mika. <laughs> hey Steph. Looking back on teenage journals and cringing. Oh, we were all terribly, horribly angsty teenagers. There was an awful lot of black Sharpie scribbles in my teenage journals. But, you know, people look back on them and they go, oh, they're so cringy, you know, and oh, I've got to get rid of that. And I'm like, no, no, look how far you've grown up. <laughs> and also to remind yourself, you know, don't ever get that hung up on a boy again. It's not necessary. Life does not have to be that dramatic. <laughs> you know? Oh, that's a bit better. There we go. Made it too low, I think. You love your old poems and stuff. I was tempted for many years to throw away some young, younger journals and I couldn't decide if I was going to or not. And then I lost some. Like, just in a move, I had packed up a box of books and journals and I, I don't know what happened to the box but sometime between me moving from one place to another they disappeared and I am absolutely gutted that I don't have those four journals even though I know they were full of angsty crap all, all journals are full of angsty crap nobody likes their own journals I bet Anais Nin thought her own journals were angsty crap so did Sylvia Plath. In fact, Sylvia Plath actually said that her journals were just full of angsty crap. Let me show you this. Yesterday in Animal Crossing, you know Lucky, the little... There's some debate about whether he's an undead mummy dog or whether he's just really accident prone. I like to think of him as just really accident prone and goth. <laughs> he's cute. But he's just so adorable and yesterday I gave him because he likes toys I gave him a little panda a little panda bear today I log in and I go and see Lucky and Lucky's doing crafting so I go and check Lucky and he's doing his crafting 
hang on, I've got to pull up the actual photo because I can't zoom into it there. Yeah, he's there he is doing his crafting. He's got his little football and his little wheelie bin I gave him because he was he had trash on the floor. And he complained about the trash on the floor, so I gave him a wheelie bin and he put it there next to his grave. <laughs> so freaking cute. And look what he's done with his little panda. It's sat by the window, looking out the window. Is that not just the most cute thing you've ever seen? I gave him a teddy bear and he placed it looking out the window. <laughs> oh, I love Lucky. He's just so cute. Anyway, let's go find Mab's prompts. So Mab Graves, is that bright enough? Yeah. Here's Mab Graves. You can tell her she's the, the pink hair girl. She does some awesome artwork. Very kind of, um, Taz Scott and, um, Mark Ryden esque type artwork. It's all very cutesy and big eyes and this kind of stuff. And she's a master of just about everything. She does oil, she does mixed media, she does acrylic, she does digital, she does everything, and she does it all exceptionally well. Um, but this is her thing, and in her, she's got them in her posts here, but if you go into her stories, she's got the prompt lists and she's got the prompt inspo. So here's the prompt list. She's got, this is the first one, the full list starting October 1st through to October 31st. Then she's got the supporting list for COVID caretakers, a list light, which is every other day. So it's 15 prompts on that one. And then this is for people who are really overworked. This is just one prompt a week. Okay. And then if you go to her prompt inspo, she's called them Inspiration Touchstones. She's got one for every single day already up. And this is what she's done. So there's a little note from her. But this is the first prompt, Werewolf. Uh, Inspiration Touchstones. Werewolf doesn't have to just be a character-driven piece. It could also be a thematic one. More about the moods and feelings, shadows, the moon, forest or city. Here are a few story and character ideas. The Wolfman, Little Red Riding Hood, Remus Lupin, Eddie Munster, Quentin Collins and the Beast of Gévaudan. So she's got everything from cryptids to Harry Potter. <laughs> so you don't even have to go and look up. And they're not all exactly the same either. A lot of these prompts, they do exactly the same thing every day. Hers are all different. Like this one is a list of additional ideas. Pumpkin, jack-o'-lantern, pumpkin patch, legend of Sleepy Hollow, nightmare before Christmas, Cinderella's carriage, which is not Halloween at all. Um, Cinderella's carriage, anthropomorphic, uh, candy bucket, pumpkin pie. It could also be an actual physical pumpkin you paint, carve or bake. Isn't it cool? She's gone over and above this year this is about the folklore of changelings different poisons stories about poisons different characters that have witches in them uh, different story ideas that have witches in them and she covers everything from kiki to baba yaga and back again she's very knowledgeable about all this sort of stuff she's got some tarot prompts in there all sorts so it's it's she's just She's fabulous. We love you, Mab. We love you. <laughs> Go check her out. Give her a follow. Mab Graves on Instagram. Uh, so the prompt list. Uh, I'm going to do all the prompts, but I'll probably do them November, October, November. So I think what I'll do is I'll use the light list for October, which is every other prompt. And then I'll do the one other ones as a light list for November alongside Povember uh, because there's a, some crossover. There's not a lot of crossover, but there is some. But also, I think some of these like pumpkin 
poemkin? Could I make a poemkin? I kind of like the idea of doing a an Edgar Allan Poe that's got a pumpkin skull. That sounds like fun. <laughs> right? So, what should we do? What shall we do? What shall we do? Let's do... Ugh, there's too many to choose from. There's too many to choose from. Werewolf, vampire, Frankenstein or cryptid? I've done a vampire prompt on YouTube before. I've also done werewolves before. I haven't done Frankenstein, I don't think. But I have done Mary Shelley. Cryptid. Have I done cryptids? Have a coffee. Thank you, Lisa. I will have a coffee. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for the super chat. I just did a villager hunt yesterday and I got Zell, who is a little black gazelle, and he's adorable. The, the animals in Animal Crossing are so, just so cute, and he was so sweet. Look at him, look at his little face. Thanks again for being so welcoming, even though we just met. <laughs> look at his little face, he's so adorable! And he's into, um, he's into classical music. So he's got a grand piano in his house, and he's got uh, a gramophone, and all sorts. Let's have a look at Frankenstein encrypted. So, how far along are we going for these? I don't remember. Frankenstein. A few story and character ideas. Mary Shelley. Dr. Frankenstein. Oh, actually, let's screenshot this one. There we go. Just in case I accidentally go past it. Frankenstein's monster. Duh. The Bride of Frankenstein. Oh, I love the Bride of Frankenstein. Lurch. Frankenweenie. Oh. I want to collect all the... Um, I've already got... I've got Lucky, I've got Anchor, and I want um, Coco, is it? The, the creepy Halloween rabbit. Um, I want Muffy the goth. Still haven't found Muffy. And every time I've come across her, I've not had a villager. So I might have to get a, a card, I think. I've never had a, a space when Muffy's been available. Um, I might have to get a, a card for her, an amiibo. Um, I've got Cherry, who is the little goth dog. I've got Kyle, who is basically Scooby-Doo. I've got Maddie, of course. Um... Smelly Cat is kind of growing on me. I think he'll be one of my official villagers that leaves last. Uh, but I also want Roscoe, the demon horse. Uh, I want... I have Fuchsia, who's kind of a rock chick, but she's very cute. And I need a Cranky, so I might swap her for Vladimir, who is a pink... He's also pink with yellow hair, but I think he's a squirrel. And he's Cranky. But he's called Vladimir. <laughs> How can I not? If you're going to have a pink character, you got to have a vampire one, right? You have Maddie too. Isn't she adorable? She is just so cute. She came running up to me this morning. She goes, I just won my own a game of hide and seek against myself. And then in little letters, he went, oh, man, I'm so bored today. <laughs> She's so cute. Yeah, I don't I don't have a cranky. Um I wouldn't mind static. I wouldn't mind Apollo. I wouldn't mind any of the dogs, like Lobo or Chief or Wolfgang, any of those, because they're all crankies. But I do already have a wolf. I have um Scooby Doo, don't I? Hello Scooby Doo. I have Kyle, who's basically Scooby. Um I want Muffy. I very desperately want Muffy. But I might get Muffy and Coco as NFLs. 
and kick out the two that I don't want. In fact, yeah, I might get Muffy, Coco and Vladimir as NFLs eventually. If I don't just happen to come across them. But I'm not in any rush to get them. I'm quite happy to just play. You have ice cream. <gasps> ice cream would be nice. Ice cream is nice cream, isn't it, Miss Maddie? Hello. Hello. Hi, Scooby-Doo. Anyway, let's get... Oh, are we ever going to get anything done today? Are we going to get anything done? No. Now I can talk. <laughs> anyway, Frank and Weenie. We like Frank and Weenie, don't we? Igor. Frankie Stein. Herman Munster. A lightning storm and a laboratory. Hmm. I like the idea of a laboratory as well because I like I like drawing weird kind of okay so what I'm planning to do I think um, I'm trying to you know I've been playing with this kind of uh, pen and ink biro black ink black and white kind of Gustav Dorr, um, Ralph Steadman, Ronald Searle, Chris Mould inspired type black and white drawing. I'm trying to get more of me into that style. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with that style, yeah, let me close that. See, it's a good job I did. Um, this is the same style that I'm going to be using. Obviously, you don't have to, but I'm going to be using the same style in my Edgar Allan Poe class when I do my Poe stuff. This is the kind of style I work want to work more in because A, I really like it, and B, it's it feels more me. There's no reason I can't add colour to it as well, but I want to nail down a, a kind of a a way of doing these caricatures that doesn't look like somebody else's work. Uh, and I think at the moment, some of the stuff I do, because it is so heavily influenced by Chris Mould and Ronald Searle, and Quentin Blake as well is another one, Gustav Dorr, um, Dormier. I, I just... I can see too much of a resemblance to somebody else's work. This one I'm happy with. This one looks like me. This one looks like a bad copy of one of Chris Moulds. <laughs> so and I want to nail down that kind of style. So what I want to do for this is to practice with drawing spooky stuff in this kind of style. So I think what I'll do, since I've got so many pages in this book and I only have 31 prompts to work with, I thought I would do the sketching and preliminaries and ideas on this page and then the actual artwork on this page which is pretty much what I'm going to do with my Poe book as well, but that's what I, not exactly, but that's kind of what I'm aiming for. So this page I'll use for ideas. So let's go back in here and find that. What was the other one? Frankenstein and what? Cryptid, was it? Pudgy Wudgy. What the hell is a Pudgy Wudgy? Was it Cryptid? I think it was. So let's screenshot that. If stopped playing Animal Crossing. I can't imagine not playing Animal Crossing. I love just pootling around, even if it's just walking around my island picking stuff stuff up. I just it it's so relaxing. And I just found another one. I posted it in our Discord the other day actually. Um Katie's got the link for Discord. Um if anybody wants to come and join us, it's just a informal chat place where we talk about journaling and witchy stuff and playing Animal Crossing. Uh, but I put um, a link to another game that I saw actually on Instagram. I wonder if I've got it. If I've got it, it's really cute. I think it's called The Last Campfire or something like that. It's like a puzzle game, but it's single player and it's like you can take your time and there's no particular you've got all these puzzles that you but it's not like it's hard to describe it it's just like you have to figure out how to do things in the game 
So it's not like single puzzles. It's just like stuff, quests you have to do, but they're puzzle quests. Um, I'm sure it's called The Last Campfire. But it's a Nintendo game. Well, it's on lots of them. It's on lots of platforms. Uh, but I'm fairly sure it's called... Why don't I just go on Discord? Because I put it in here, didn't I? Having just said I put it in Discord. The Last Campfire, yeah. And it's just this like little Ewok type thing. It's an adventure game about the story of a lost ember trapped in a puzzling place, searching for meaning and a way back home. And you go through like this thing where you're unfreezing, you, you relight all the embers of hope and you unfreeze all the stone statues to turn them back to life to relight the last campfire and reclaim this lost world. It just sounds like such a nice, such a nice, quiet, relaxing game to play. So I think I'm going to get that one and play that when I feel like playing single player. Who's messaging me now? Rachel's asking me about rice. I don't know. I'll come back to that later. <laughs> I can't answer questions about rice in the middle of a stream. I don't know. Um, did I did I photograph that one or not? Yes, I did. Okay, so here we go. Cryptid ideas. Bigfoot, jackalope. That's that little rabbit thing with ear, with deer horns, is it? The Flatwoods Monster. The Flatwoods Monster. I don't remember which one that is. Mothman. The Gully Wampus. A Wendigo, Yeti, Skinwalker, Brownie. The Dover Demon. A Unicorn, a Chupacabra. That's the Mexican one, isn't it? spring Jack. That's the jumping thing on the rooftops. The Jersey Devil, pretty much the same thing. Loveland Frogman. Oh, I remember that. That's creepy. No, I won't be doing that one. The Ogopogo. See, if you if you listen to um, Sam and what's his face and their podcast is called I can't remember. I suck. I'll put it in the description later. Podcasts. There's a po really good podcast. I want to call it Farscape and that's not what it's called. But it's all about weird and wonderful. The Kraken. The Bunyip. The Loch Ness Monster. Loch No! Nessie! Oh, I like Nessie. Nessie. Okay, let's write this down. So cryptid. Let's do cryptid. Nessie. I like the idea of Nessie. I like Nessie. I also like the Mothman actually because that's, if you've seen the Mothman prophecies, the artwork in that is really interesting. Kraken. Oh, that makes me think Pirates of the Caribbean. And who doesn't love a bit of Johnny Depp, right? Kraken. Ozark Howler. The Ozark Howler. I remember that one, but I can't remember what it looks like. Thunderbird. Nah. Phantom Kangaroo. <laughs> Crypts, cryptids are basically the folklore monsters. Yeah, you know, like um, things that people say they've seen, but they there's no solid proof or scientific evidence, like Sasquatch, you know, Mothman, all that kind of stuff. So they're not they're not fairy tale monsters, folklore monsters. They, they're kind of like cryptids specifically are ones that people say uh, there are eyewitness accounts of. Does that make sense? You have a local one called a wog, but it's more of a local legend and it's not well known. Oh, that would be interesting. You could do a whole page on it, couldn't you? investigating it and stuff 
Phant I'm sorry, I got, I got, I got caught by the phantom kangaroo. Which I just think is hilarious. A phant, a phantom kangaroo, a ghost kangaroo. The skunk ape. Ooh, that's that red-headed one. I'm watching a, oh, I'm watching a, a mockumentary. It's not a mockumentary. It's like a documentary style TV program, TV series about the skunk ape in the Louisiana swamps. I can't remember what it's called. But then I suck. <laughs> Me and names. It's just, it's getting worse. It's like I can see the words written in my head. But I can't actually read them to tell you what they are. It's not even on the tip of my tongue. It's in my head. Can't remember. It's a series, though. It's quite good. A phoenix. Yeah. Not spooky enough. The Beast of Bray Road. Ooh. I know that one. The Fiji mermaid. Oh, oh, no, fish. We don't do mermaids. We don't do fish. A hodag. Hodag? Hodag? H O D A G? I don't know what that is. Mermaids? No. Owl man. I think we can guess what that is. Sheep squatch. <laughs> Sheep squatch. <laughs> Sheep squatch. Gotta have a go at that one, haven't we? What are we gonna do for a sheep squatch? <laughs> sheep squatch. Oh. I know, boo boo, it's hilarious. A tea kettle. I don't know what a tea kettle is. I know what a tea kettle is. I don't know what a tea kettle is. Might have to look some of those up. Sheep squatch. I've gotta look up sheep squatch, I'm sorry. Sheep squatch. Sheep. I was trying to look up um, Elon Musk's kid's name to try and work out how it's pronounced. I think it's pronounced the minute I'm go I hit 18, I'm going to change it by default. Sheep Squatch. This I've got to find out about. Sheep Squatch. Oh, it's a creature from Fallout. Okay. Sheep. Ooh. Ooh, he's cool. A sheep squatch. A large woolly head cryptid with quills, mangy white fur and large horns found in Appalachia. Appalachia, Appalachia. If you pronounce it Appalachia, I'll throw an Appalachia. Appalachia in 2102. Okay, so this one is a mythical fantasy creature. This is not, this is not technically a cryptid. It's an in-game cryptid. Sheep squatch. Allegedly bipedal, pedal, highly aggressive ram-like creature. Now, I'm not seeing that in my head. I'm not picturing that. I'm What I'm picturing is more like Sean the Sheep <laughs> with a bat in his hand. <laughs> Sometimes when you've got a lot of personal stuff going on in your life, there's just, it's like you have no time for, for adding in something fantasy. It's like your brain's constantly telling you there's more important stuff to be doing. So you can't settle to play a game. Yeah, whereas World of Warcraft is just farming and grinding. You don't really have to concentrate to enjoy the game. You can just mash buttons <laughs> and occasionally hit a level and go, ha, ah, awesome. It's thought that they are an ordinary farm animal that was mutated into sheep squatch through the power of radiation. Some even say it's a hoax. <gasps> See, now I'm seeing Gromit dressed up as a sheep to pretend he's a sheep squatch. 
So maybe I shouldn't maybe I shouldn't go with that one. Because I'm seeing things that are not. The trouble is, every time I, I think of something, I don't think of anything original. I think of something that looks like something else. I'm thinking, sorry. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay. Let's see what we got. The sheep squatch. So we've got a ram type creature. So it's going to have horns. Ram's horns go which way? That way? Maybe it's like a like one of those wolf skin thing where somebody's wearing it on their head. See, I'm still seeing I'm still seeing grommet in my head. So I need to make a person. Let's make a person. There we go. Let's make him like pudgy. Maybe he's got big farm wellies on. Maybe he's a farmer. So I'm just sketching out ideas. I'm, this is not what it's going to look like. I'm just, this is how I think. Maybe he's got an axe in this hand because it's like, they're supposedly really violent, right? And in this hand, he's maybe got... Maybe, maybe we'll put a hatchet in this hand. And then in this hand, we'll have like a, a baseball bat type thing. Because you'd, you'd carry a baseball bat down there, wouldn't you? So maybe he could have a baseball bat and he's got his jeans tucked in his wellies and he'd probably have a lumberjack shirt, right? Maybe a beer paunch. And he'd obviously be off his head, so he'd have a glazed expression. Uh, Mothman. Yeah, Mothman. Mothman sounds fun until you actually go to draw it and then you're like... Nothing's ever going to be f as funny as Mothman. My favourite murder animated Mothman. So... Phantom Kangaroo. Now for a Phantom Kangaroo, I'm seeing like... This kind of that looks more like a a sheep than a kangaroo. It's supposed to be a kangaroo. And then you got like the big feet coming out like this. And the tail. And maybe it could be they have little arms, don't they? Like a T-Rex. Maybe it, it could be carrying like a basket of treats. Like a pumpkin head. Halloween style basket of treats. And instead of having its little one in its pouch, it could have the little one in here. And the little one's also dressed up as a ghost. That would be a cute. A phantom kangaroo. That sounds cute. I like that idea. Sheep Squatch is quite funny, I've got to admit. I like him. 
Kraken is kind of boring. I'm just seeing a big come here beastie kind of thing, you know. Maybe not Kraken. Nessie. I'm just, I, I saw a photo on Instagram. It was supposed to be a photo of somebody on holiday. Was it like some famous celebrity like Mariah Carey or something? And she's in this... It's like a jacuzzi inside a swimming pool on a rooftop bar by the sea. It's just layers and layers and layers of water. But all I remember is looking at it and going, why is Nessie in the background? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, gosh, I've forgotten about chat again, haven't I? Never played WoW. I know a lot of people do, yeah. I stopped playing those kind of games. I'm, a, I'm too addicted to those kind of games. I get really into them and I end up sitting down for like 19 hours playing a game. And who has time for that, honestly? I'd rather spend 19 hours painting these days. I do love little puzzle games though and little poodly games where I can, you know, I can pop into Animal Crossing for like an hour and a half and just poodle around, tidying up my island, catching a few bugs here and there. Chatting to my villagers, buying clothes, swapping outfits, playing dress up, you know, and uh, uh, it just it's just something different to do. Whereas, yeah, for you, you can just be in the game, just doing something casual without having to think about it. Yeah, it's a different kind of game. I mean, when I need that kind of switch off stuff, I go and play Battle.net. Well, not Battle.net. I play Diablo 2. Single player. I just go and whack a mole. Whack a mole games. You loathe tanking, you'd rather play healer. No! No! The best place to be is a rogue. A really tiny rogue that stands behind the tank and just does a lot of damage. Because then all you can do is just sit and button mash! I'm a button masher. I, I have no sense of, oh, that person's health is failing or, you know, oh, I've got to target all these enemies. Or I'm just like, no, just give me something sharp and pointy and let me stab stuff. <laughs> That's how I play. So I always play a rogue. Unless the rogue is a bow type. And then I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. It's why you've never played. Between painting, journaling, sketching, reading, knitting, etc. You never wanted to do anything else. Yeah, see, for, I'm the same. But since this is basically my job, um, it can feel, even if you're working on something for yourself, it can feel like you're working still. So I, start, I picked up Animal Crossing purely so that I had something else to do that wasn't, you know, because normally I would go out somewhere or I would... Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd go and have a coffee outside or I'd go out sketching. And when we were in lockdown, I couldn't do that. So I started Animal Crossing. So that's kind of my little, you know, I go and run around my little island for an hour or so. And I, I do this, that and the other. But I, I like the idea of that little puzzle game because it's it's casual. I'm better with casual playing than something that you have to play regularly. If it, uh, one of the things I absolutely love about Animal Crossing is that there's no levels. Even in um, Pocket Camp, I found it a bit stressful that there were levels. And even now, I can feel it in the back of my head going, you haven't played Animal Crossing Pocket Camp in ages, and you're on level 93. You need to get to level 100. You need to get to 99. You need to get to 100. You need to do this. You need to do that. You know, there's always more to do. Whereas, you know, Animal Crossing is basically just collecting stuff. <laughs> and yes of course I want to collect all the all the bugs and all the fish and all this and all that but it's in stages so I've got except for the longhorn beetle I haven't got the citrus longhorn um no sorry I got that one this morning um and I got the monarch butterfly this morning I don't have the ghost umbrella jellyfish thing the swimming creature that's the only one I'm missing but I've got until December to find it, so I'm, I'm not, you know, it's not like I'm in any rush. <laughs> That's your problem with it, that there's no levels or achievements. Well, there's all the, there's all the, the cards, you know, the, 
the nook miles. That's my level of achievement. One, I plan to have finished all of those and to have all the have collected all the fish, DIYs, bugs, creatures, etc., etc., etc. Maybe not all the specialist stuff. I mean, I didn't bother with the mermaid set because I don't like mermaids. I got a few of them by accident, <laughs> and I gave most of them away. Um, I'd like to collect all the villagers that I want. Eventually, I'll make my island look pretty, you know. But I, I'm not because it's casual. I can do it as and when, and I don't feel like I have to spend 15 hours playing it. And in fact, I kind of get bored playing it for more than a couple of hours at a time because there's nothing to do. So it's better for me that there's nothing to do. Whereas that that last campfire, I'll probably get that on a Friday night and by Monday I'll have finished it. <laughs> but it's only a 15 quid game, so I don't mind spending a weekend doing it. You're in read all the fiction mode. Yeah, I'm doing, um, I'm reading all the, the Poe stuff, but I do that while I'm sketching or while I'm sewing or while I'm knitting. Oh, I did get... Oh, it hasn't arrived yet. I bought some spooky fabrics to go with my black and white fabrics and some more uh, Beetlejuice stripes because I'm going to do a quilt. If anybody quilts, I don't want boring squares. Squares are boring. Okay, I've done quilting before. I'm looking for maybe something like one of those strip ones where it's like... You know where you have the strips where they're like parquet flooring? I'm looking for some kind of pattern like that to do. Maybe with some kind of motif in the middle. Just something that's a little bit more challenging than just sewing lots of squares together. Because I've done the whole... I've done the hexagons, you know? Where you have all the hexagons and you make a pin cushion. And I've done the five, the diamond one where you have it like that. So I've done all of those, but I'm just looking for something a little bit more challenging. Um, I've done random ones as well. I've done random fabric where you basically just get a sheet and you tear up bits of fabric and you just sew the bits of fabric on. So I'm not a complete novice, but I want something that's a bit more challenging. If anybody knows of anything like that, that they've already used the... Um, used a pattern for please let me know because it'll save me having to go and find one <laughs> bear in mind i'm not a proper quilter i plan to just cut bits and sew them and i will sew by hand even though i've got a sewing machine because that's i enjoy hand sewing um, but yeah if you've got anything like that if you've seen anything like that let me know what does a kangaroo's head look like how can I make this look more kangaroo like? Kangaroo. Uh, kangaroo. Ooh, speaking of animals. Sorry, this. Whoosh, there she goes again. I posted about this yesterday on Instagram, but go and look up. Um, is it called Elephant Rock? Iceland, yeah, it's called Elephant Rock. Look how beautiful this is. It's like, oh, is that not the most beautiful thing you've seen? It literally looks like an old, it, it reminds me of, um, Ganesh, is it? The Hindu god, the, the elephant god. That's what it reminds me of. It's just so beautiful. Look at it. Look at that. Oh. It literally looks like a big mammoth. Even from there, it looks like a mammoth lying in the sea. It's, it's so incredible. And so beautiful. Look at it when it's got green on, on it. All the lichen on there. And look, it even looks like there's an eye in there because of the, the shadowing. I don't know if that might be a, an enhanced photo, but there's plenty of other photos that are the same. You know, it's, it's not like that's an unusual photo. I think it might just be colour enhanced. But, 
Oh, isn't it gorgeous? It's called Elephant Rock in Iceland. Go look it up. It's just such a beautiful place. Anyway, back to kangaroos. <sighs> kangaroo. Here we go. That's what kangaroo looks like. Oh, kangaroo ears are really big. That's why it looks like a sheep. Because <laughs> kangaroo's ears are bigger than its head. And I've made it look like a sheep. Okay, so it's more of a pointy nose, like a dog. And a really big ears. Almost like a rabbit shaped ears. And it's got really big eyebrows. That's quite quite defining actually, it's really big eyebrows. Really big angry eyebrows. Maybe we could have him kind of a hole for his snoot sticking out. So we can actually turn it into a well, his face is like a it's almost like a llama. A little chin there. That looks more like a kangaroo. There we go. So if we make that a hole, and you can see his eyes there. I think he'd be angry. I don't know. There's just something about kangaroos. They always, they always look angry. They always look like they're going to beat you up. And they're the same. The same thing is that they they look like a T Rex as well. I wonder if T-Rex hopped. <gasps> Can you imagine? A massive T-Rex. Boom. Boom. <laughs> oh. Oh, they're a different shape than I thought they were as well. So it's come out like that and then down. And then they've got a tail there. Okay. So maybe that could be. Hanging down like that. We'll have to look at some cloth draping. There we go, that's better. Huge feet, obviously. And they've got like big toes on them, like that. It's kind of creepy, I'm not gonna lie. What thinner legs there than I thought? This goes up here more. So maybe a, a bit of a thing there. Huge tail. And then maybe we could have a little little baby one in the trick or treat box. That sounds like fun. How about if we use that kind of pose? I think if we use that kind of pose, we can do it so feet, legs, uh, tail, feet, feet, legs, belly, back, tiny little arms, tiny little arms, the old chest. Scooby, you look like a kangaroo, mate. Do you know that? Huge ears. Big eyebrows. Funny googly eyes, and then we'll give them a. Uh, like that. And then. Maybe it's hanging down this way. With little arms. And poking out like he's got little sleeves. Holding his little bucket that looks like a pumpkin with his, his little baby one in it. Also, that's cute. I like it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. 
So let's establish a spot for him to stand on. So he needs to be standing kind of maybe there-ish. So his feet and his tail will be kind of there-ish. Okay. Tail goes across and up. Big hip, big old chicken bone. Oh, his legs are not far enough forward. Body, back, arms. Ears. Oh, just about going to fit him in if I do him that way. Need to move him down a bit. Yes, this is your last call if you are a lurker. Say hello in chat. We're going to do a giveaway at the end of the session, which will be not too much longer, for a place on Halloween Chronicles. Lee, uh, Katie is taking names. We will pick a random number and she'll tell me who that is on the list. So make sure you've said hello. Or you won't be in the draw. If you've already purchased your place on Halloween Chronicles, you will be given a tarot reading instead in October. And you can do what you like with your free place. You can give it to somebody else in the chat or give it back for somebody else to be chosen. Or you can do a giveaway with it on Instagram or something. Or you can just gift it to a friend who you think might like the class. So don't forget to say hello. Make sure you've said hi. One entry per person. No purchase necessary. Blah, 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 blah. It's not a lottery. It's just anybody who's here live. Random, random name. So let's see. Uh... Let's start with them, their ears. So his ears kind of there and kind of there. Maybe his head's on a little bit of an angle. And it comes down like that. And his snoot. And his neck. Oh, kangaroos have a neck. Ooh. And it goes straight down into his arms. Why is my pen not working? Oh, if I touch the paper with it, it works better. It's got a nice rounded shape on there. I like that rounded shape. The chest. Uh, feet are going to be a approximately there. I'm going to overemphasize the feet because it's kind of cartoony. So we've got the back round down to the tail. Tail flat. Coming up. Oh, a big belly. Huge belly. Huge belly. Oh, we might, we're not going to see the belly, are we? I'm not going to see the belly. We don't need to put the belly in. Okay. That's going to be the eyes with the big eyebrows. So that's going to be where the holes are for the eyes. 
Let's make them kind of wiggly. That's where his nose is going to be. Maybe he should have a bit hanging off his, a bit of drape hanging off his nose. I don't know. Let's say his arms are coming out through his drape like that like it's kind of a t-shirt almost because he'd need his hands free to hold his pumpkin basket what is up with this pen come on and there's his big big old pumpkin basket jack-o-lantern thing Do the same head shape. Like that. And it hanging out. These big holes for the eyes. But much smaller eyes. <laughs> Sitting in there in his little basket. So this is going to be hanging down like that. This is going to be kind of draped, so drapey, maybe coming down this way a bit. Oh, maybe we could put his hip in there. So his hip is coming up and around and then straight down like that, which is weird because I would have drawn it like I did there. <laughs> Big old chicken leg type thing going on. Going down and under. So maybe we could have his... Well, I guess it's her, isn't it? I don't think male hip kangaroos have pouches, do they? Let's do some kind of like that. There we go. I still think it'd look better if he had Snoop was out, so maybe we'll do a, a thing that way and then we'll draw the Snoot. Because they kind of they got kind of got cute noses like deer, haven't they? Let's save this image so I can zoom in on it. what I'm using. Okay, so this is fabric. I think I can do it like that. Okay. Big hairy eyebrows in. The shading around that so it looks like it's not flat on the face. series Crossing Jordan oh I used to watch that I've seen a few really good I've got the um, now TV entertainment package in the UK and it's all the it's all like sky crime sky history sky all, all the sky channels basically and it's got some really good stuff on it it's got sci-fi channel and everything it's it's really good okay so these ears he's got a tufty bit on his head that kind of goes across his, the top of his head. So maybe 
we'll do it so he's got a tufty bit coming out there, sticking out of his costume. I kind of like that. Ears, big ears. Okay, so. This one is more kind of that way, and then up and around behind there. So let's do that kind of furry. This bit's kind of furry around here. Maybe do a little bit of kind of furry edging. Because you can't see as much of that here. Okay, so the snoot. The snoot is cute. It goes like that. Really dark. Yeah, it's got kind of this rounded bit here. And that's got kind of a chin like that. A few whiskers. Maybe make this stand up from the skin a little bit, maybe even put a crease or two on it. Arms coming round like that and then down. <sighs> Messed that up, didn't I? Never <laughs> mind. Mm. Kind of a cut off t shirt effect almost. Over on there with these little hands, tiny little hands. Okay. And the ears on the baby. Happy with that ear. I think it needs to be a bit more kind of that shape. That's better. I'm just going to do baby's ears quite simply. I don't want to make them too... Oh, that looks good. I don't want to make them too complicated. I want them to look a little bit simpler than Mama. And I think we'll have him all ghosty. Just his eyes. Basket handle, basket handle, pumpkin. 
Okay. Let's make it a bit more kind of an odd pumpkin shape. I kind of want it to look like a carved pumpkin as opposed to just a plastic thing. That's where his toes are going to come down. hands sticking out. Of the eyes of the oh that's cute. This little hand coming down here. Maybe he's got a maybe he's holding a lolly in his hand. Maybe you could be holding a lollipop. Like that. And his little hand like that. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. And then all this will be dark. That way we don't have to do any detail. <laughs> okay, that's cute. I like it. Maybe give him a little dovety bit in his ear like that. And then Mama's costume is coming down here. And a few nips and tucks. And then her big old hind legs. Again, maybe we can make that furry again. It doesn't have to be always straight lines, it can be furry lines. So the feet are kind of like claw finger type things with nails. So let's do it kind of like that. Not terribly realistic, but we're not really going for realism, are we? Uh, her back. This is all fur, so this can be this can be furry as well. And it gets gradually smaller, shorter fur as we get down to the end. This little tail. Oh, her tail's going to go off the page. Oh well. Okay, where does her tail go? Okay, her bum comes down here. And this is all furry. And it comes down and around and down and around. And this is quite smooth actually, so maybe we do that like that. And then this comes. That's also quite smooth, so maybe we could do it that way. And we just gotta work out where our other foot is gonna be, which is about there, I think. And that'll be all dark. She's a mama, so maybe she's like really tired. <laughs> oh, damn it. Run over that again. She's got little black feet. Little, do her little black hands in there. And this is furry. And this is furry. Maybe a little black hand there. Just 
some more furry bits, give it a little furry bit on her elbow. A bit more of a sort of cut off t-shirt look there. Okay. That's still bits of the little one that we can't, that aren't covered by the sheet. Quite dark. Kind of big googly eyes. Maybe we won't give him eyebrows. Maybe we'll just colour him in there. Yeah, that's better. It's a bit more obvious he's wearing a sheet then. The size is okay, but I'm you can tell I'm used to drawing on slightly bigger paper because it doesn't quite fit and I would normally have a bit more space. But that's just, you know, it's the first time I've drawn on this size, so it's not surprising that I didn't really think well enough about what I was doing. I might actually redraw this one on an, on a second page just to get the proportions right now that I know what I want to do. My hand keeps catching the corner as well. I'm used to having more paper here so I keep catching the corner and then it, it skips and I end up with a double line. I don't want double lines. Another good reason for having my new glasses keep seeing doubles. See my lines are not quite as neat as they should be and that's basically because I can't see what I'm doing. But I can see, I can't see well enough. It's like I can see what I'm doing but I can't see details and I know that if I could see better I would be able to make it a little bit, just that little bit more precise that I like. I think that's the, the key to making my work look vastly different is um, having this slightly more precise look to it because like all the, the people that I mentioned before that I take inspiration from are all very scribbly, you know. I mean, you watch Chris Mould actually work and he'll scribble together. He would have drawn this in about 10 seconds because he has no patience. He, he would just be like, oh, just draw it. Whereas I like to, I like to spend time going over stuff and filling things in and adding shadows and you know tweaking stuff. I can spend hours doing something like this. I think he's coming out all right though. I kind of like this. I like this furry texture. I think I want to do some more with that. I'm gonna shore up these lines here. That are going to be in shadow and where it's going to be touching the ground. I need to relook at that foot as well. I don't, I don't, there's something not right about that foot. And then these bits are under his tail, he's just kind of short fur and then it kind of gets longer as it goes up. is quite smooth. And then it suddenly gets curly. Or well, scraggly, not not curly, scraggly. I figured that bit is scraggly. Gradually getting better and then we do this bit as kind of shorter
butter for it, like that. See, I keep getting these, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see these little straggly bits? They keep getting underneath my lines. That's literally because I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> this is why you need an eye test, people. Don't put it off. Go and get an eye test. Okay, let's add some more shading to that bit there. up behind his bum there. Some nice dark shadows in there where the material is caught up. And we'll do some curly fur. And then this is. This, okay, let's do that there. So that's so that's going to be part of that leg. Going to be darker. Okay, and then this is all short dark fur, so be straight. Excuse me. Ooh. I may have gone into the zone there for a while. And then this is all curly fur. Fuzzy, fuzzy. Fuzzy, fuzzy. It kind of comes down like a pant leg almost. Fuzzy, fuzzy. Fuzzy, fuzzy. Fuzzy, fuzzy. Yep, literally scribbling fur. Scribble, 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 scribble. Till it looks like fur. And then scribble a bit more. And scribble a bit more. Maybe you could have a few bits of flyaway fur coming out. Because, you know, she's a mop. 
she's a bit bedraggled. Okay. She was up all night. Now she's trick or treating. Went stupid costume. It's too hot. <laughs> Excuse me, something keep yawning. Crikey. I think this loop needs to be a little more rounded there. Maybe a little less scraggly like that. Just kind of with little tufty bits. That's better. And then this bit needs to be more scraggly here. And then this bit is really scraggly like super scraggly bits sticking out of her head. Same with this, this is super scraggly. And these are just kind of bits hanging out, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit on the edges. And then I think the rest of it is going to be kind of short hair, flat hair, yeah. Short flat hair. See, this is what I mean about kind of getting more defined with it is where you can see textures. So it's not just a bit of scribble, it's a bit of it's flat scribble or curly scribble or dark scribble or you know it's kind of what I'm aiming for might have overdone it there a little bit but you know until you overdo things you don't really know how much you need to do or not do next time so overdo things I say so that little Tufty bit around here, a uh, little tufty chin, and I'm going to do this as kind of short hair and then the snoot. That's better, gives it a little bit of colour as well. And then this bit of the nose is really dark. Definitely be much happier when I can get my lines crisper. Oof. Not that you can get super crisp lines with a ballpoint pen, but. So I'm going to do kind of short curly arms. And I guess neater as it goes down. wrists and little black hands.
need to check the feet. Now what I've started doing with, oh I didn't do the eyes, I need to do that. Poor mama's got very tired eyes. So what I've started doing is to not just do it with ballpoint, but it's nice to go in with like a fine liner afterwards. The row zone. Same amount of fans as boy zone, but way cooler. Okay. It's not really saying much. I mean, how how cool do you have to be to be better than boy zone? Oh, you're still talking about boss fights in World of Warcraft, cranky. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm just using a fine liner to go in and tighten up some lines. And it also helps to just make a few lines darker. I don't know, I don't know if it's really picking up on camera, but see the nose? Okay, so there's the nose. Actually, it's a not good shape. I need to reshape that nose. So let's reshape it so it's even. So much darker it looks. So anywhere I need a darker line like this one here. You just go over it with a fine liner and it just adds a little something something. I'm not quite sure what it does exactly, but somehow it just stands out that tiny bit better than if you just leave it with just the ballpoint pen. And I don't even know how. Maybe it's because it's a different colour or something. I don't know. But see, if I colour in these little bits on the handle, in between the hands... Suddenly you can see where the hands are and where the handles are. Maybe it's a different colour black. Okay, absolute last chance. If you are here and you haven't said hello in chat, you need to do it now because in a couple of minutes we are going to be doing the draw. You don't have to say anything particular, just let us know you're here. Put a smiley face, say hello. So because this one's really tiny, I'm going to sharpen him up by going all the way around his outlines. Because he's, he's only little, I want him to stand out a bit from mum. And one way to do that is making it sharper because he's in front, he's in focus. So we've got a bit of mum's shirt coming down here. Sharpen up his nose there. Okay, this needs to be a little sharper because that's in shadow. 
In fact, I'm going to colour that in because that is very dark. You can't really see what's in there at all. Same with this. This is very dark in here. Let's make sure all these stand out against that fur. I don't know, it's just kind of it's kind of like crisper outlines, maybe. Maybe I just like drawing in fine liner. Maybe I need to draw in fine liner. I don't know. I love my ballpoint pens. I don't really want to change, but I just feel like the combination of the two adds a little something something. But that will do for now. Oh, darkness under there. Where the back of the pouch is. We had a bit more. Oh, almost like it's a different colour curls. Maybe I'm just imagining how much of an effect this has, but it just, I don't know, to me, it just makes it feel a little bit more polished, finished. maybe oh i think it might be because it's easier to get a a dark line like with a, a ballpoint pen you have to go over it and over it and over it and the more you go over it the less sharp the line looks whereas with this you get a straight you get a black line straight away it could be that that's what it is so maybe i need to use a a proper pen more than a ballpoint i don't know I need to draw with my fountain pen. I suppose it depends whether you're going in with pencil first. If you're going in with pencil first, there's no reason why you can't just go straight in with fine liner afterwards. But if you're going to draw in pen, it's hard because you can't really get a line, like a, a flat line with a... You're either committed or you're not. You can't get like a pencil line. Whereas with a ballpoint pen, you can get pencil line type things. Okay, I need to look up feet on a kangaroo, but I'm not doing that right now. Okay, that's it. No more entries. No more entries. Cut off is done. Last person to comment is Jaylee20. 
J. Lee 20. So anybody above J. Lee 20 will be entered into the draw. Or J. Lee 20 and above. Oh, you just sneaked in. You finally made it to a live one. Well, you picked the right live one to do because we're doing a giveaway. <laughs> you snuck in under the wire. Nice one. So, Katie's getting all the lists together. Heard. There we go. So that last person is J. Lee 20. If you didn't comment, you've only got yourself to blame because I've been saying it all through the stream. So when we know how many... Do you want to do the number, Katie, or you do the number? You just, you just, you've got the list. Tell us how many there are. And then go to number, how many are on the list? Thirty-five, cool. So we need a number between one and thirty-five. You know what? I'll pick a number. I'll pick a number between one and thirty-five. What number shall we have? Maddie's birthday's on the twenty-third, so let's have the twenty-third. The twenty-third person on the list, whoever that is. And I, I haven't been paying attention, so I've got no idea. <laughs> the delay is real, yes. 35 people, I have chosen number 23, because that's Maddie's birthday. So remember, if you've already purchased your place in the class, then you'll get a tarot reading instead in October, which we can do before we get excited. Whoa, yeah, we can't get excited yet, boo. We don't know which one, which Deborah. It's just occurred to me maybe that was a little unfair. Hang on. Was it? Because I knew Jay Lee had only just joined. It just says Deborah. Okay, so it's just Deborah. Just Deborah. Deborah. Is that Deborah Speed? Maybe. Might be Deborah Speed. She's a patron. Okay, so Deborah. D E B R A. You had, you commented and said, hi, you have won the place on the Christmas, on the, sorry, the Halloween Chronicles class. Deborah. Okay, there she is. Deborah. Uh, let me turn on timestamps. If I turn on timestamps, I can get you the, the thing. I found her. There we go. Um... 1650 Katie at 1650 that's that Deborah yes that's you that's you same avatar yes 1829 that Deborah oh thank you Kate Mika I didn't know you could do at people yes that Deborah at 1829 you need to contact Katie and get onto the class and if you've already purchased the class are you in the class yet? I don't I don't think you're in the class yet, are you? Are you Deborah Speed from Patreon? It's so complicated because we've got Deb, we've got Deb G, we've got Debbie, we've got Deborah, we've got Deborah. <laughs> in fact we've got a couple of Debras. <laughs> but some people use their name and some don't. You're not in the class yet, excellent. Awesome. Yeah, that's why I put the that's why I put the timestamps on, Katie, because it's easier for me to see because I can get all the chat. I 
Oh, the lag is real. Are you already signed up, Deb? Yes, I'm in. Is that a yay, I won, I'm in? Or I've already signed up? Oh God, the lag drives me crazy on this thing. Yeah, you can't click on the username unless it's a mod. So, Deborah, here's how we'll here's how we'll figure it out with the crossover of asking a question and getting an answer and not being able to remember. You're already signed up. Okay, so you can have a tarot reading instead which we can do as part of the class or we can do it privately, whichever. So what do you want to do with your giveaway? Do you know somebody you would like to invite or would you like to recycle it and Katie, can, we can pick somebody else. Katie can pick a number. Sorry about the lag. It's so infuriating, isn't it? If you know somebody who'd like to do the class, you can gift it to them as a gift from a, to a friend. Or if you don't know anybody, then you can just recycle it in and Katie will pick a number for somebody else to win it. We could end up with quite a few different tarot readings. Maybe shuffle the list, Katie. Take Deb out and shovel the, shuffle the list. <laughs> recycle it. Okay, thank you, Deb. So, Deb, you get a free tarot reading and your free class that you won, you are recycling back into the pot. Katie, shuffle the list and pick another number and tell us who gets it. I trust Katie. She's more organised than I am, so she'll pick a random number. Shuffle the list and do a random number. Yeah. There we go. Oh, it's exciting. So let me write that down in my little book. <laughs> oh. My Jack my Jack Skellington pen, look. It's a bit worse for wear. It used to have Jack Skellingtons all down here, but it rubs off on my rings. But it it's got it's got a light. A little torch on the end. That keeps me amused. Okay, so uh, I've got a couple of things to write in there. So let's do 16.09, Wednesday. THC giveaway, YouTube. Deborah is going to have a tarot. We're shuffling the list, by the way, because it did occur to me that since I knew Jay Lee was the last person to join, that was a bit unfair, just picking a random number. Your computer's slow, yeah, tell me about it. Um, so by shuffling the list, so that means we don't know where Jay Lee is in the, in the thing, so she gets as much chance as anybody else to perhaps win. I don't like to make anything seem like it's unfair. So Deborah's getting a tarot reading. It's exciting because we could end up with loads of people getting tarot readings, you know, before we actually find somebody who's not signed up to the class yet or doesn't have anybody to give it to. <laughs> oh. Miss Maddie. Miss Maddie's playing Sofa Angels. Can you hear her? <laughs> she rolls around on her back like rah, rah. it's so funny hi boo boo hi boo boo <laughs> <laughs> Maddie 
Okay, so this is, this should be dry now, enough for me to erase the pencil, which will make it look a lot cleaner. There we go, that's better. Nicole Pivek is the, so Deb recycled hers because she's already in the class and she's having a tarot reading. And the second winner picked is Nicole Pivek. Maddie's making your dog bark. Oh, she's a bugger, isn't she? Okay. So I think what I'm going to do, even though I know this won't cover, because you pretty much can't cover them, I'm going to, ah, there they are, and grab my Poskas, treated myself to some new Poskas in different colours, uh, oh, these are not, none of those are Halloween colours, so I need my other Poskas, yay, Nicole's not in the class, so excited, yay, oh congratulations, talk to Katie and she will get you signed up with Trello and in the class. Nice to have you aboard. And yes, we'll be doing one for um, Christmas Chronicles and One Frog Sing as well, so don't worry. We always do a giveaway for each class. See, this is why my old posters annoy me. See this? This? Blooming flicking everywhere every time you shake them. They're also not very opaque anymore. Maybe I need to get some more. Maybe I need to get some new ones. Because my new ones work so much better than these do. These are these are so old. They're not supposed to be translucent. They're supposed to be opaque. Mine are translucent. Let's do a black and white drawing, she said. Colours it in orange. Let's make his little paws a bit easier to see. Oh, I'm sure I've got a better pa paint pen than this. I've got some. I've got some over there. I might have to pick them up. The Poskas are supposed to be opaque. Why are mine so crap? Are they just really old? I don't like these fiber, these plastic tip ones either. The one mil ones are plastic tips, and I much prefer the bullet tips with the the fiber ends. They just are not fun to play with, these ones. They're too harsh. It's actually ripping up the paper because the, the nib is so hard. Maybe you're not supposed to colour with these, I don't know. Could be user error. Could be user error. There is always that possibility. Okay. Okay. Yeah, welcome aboard, Nicole. Enjoy. Uh, where is my... I've got a thin white Posca rather than them. Here he is. This is one of the new ones. See the new ones? These are the extra fine. These have bullet tip, bullet point nibs. They are fibre nibs. They're not plastic nibs. And these are much nicer to work with. This won't cover over the black ballpoint pen. Nothing covers over black ballpoint pen. But it will allow me to sharpen up the edges and it is 
white on cream paper so it should stand out a little bit at least make him look a little bit more like a ghost there you go yeah he looks a bit more like a ghost doesn't he? well he kind of looks like a moomin but Let's not get into that. Uh, let's do Mama's eyes as well. Make them stand out a little bit better. You can't cover over ballpoint pen because it's an oil-based product. Not gel pen. So, like what what Japanese manufacturers call a ballpoint pen is actually a gel pen. This is a ballpoint pen like a proper ballpoint and it's oil based ink oil based and alcohol based you cannot cover it up it will always rise to the surface even if you think you've covered it up it will always come up so even if I manage to make this look like it's all white I've still pulled it up orange is the new black <laughs> oh I think I need a new I've got purple I've got I've got all these beautiful colors you see these are gorgeous um, I'm gonna swatch them I've already swatched them all but these are the colors I got because I'm not a big fan of the bright colors I could do with an orange and a bright green the lime green like the really really bright lime green and an orange obviously because they're Halloween colors but these are the colors I picked so I've got violet lilac this is much more of a bluey color this is proper purple this is more of a bluey purple dark brown that should say not brown the brown is a bit more gingery this is the dark brown uh, the red wine which is kind of a pinky rose color it's like a rose gold if rose gold wasn't metallic so that makes sense so it's kind of a it's kind of a dusky pink color the dark red which is blood red the dark fuchsia which is really pretty that's a really nice color it's like rose madder pink it's not opera pink it's not like in your face neon pink it's like dark pink the black obviously the navy blue which is really nice i love the navy blue although you can't see the navy blue on here it is actually a really nice color the slate gray which i really like and the beige so they're all they all go together very well and like i say i could do with a i could do with a new green and a new orange just for halloween um, I've got basic colours over there. I've also got a couple of brush pens. I've got the regular red and I've got the dark blue. Not the navy blue, but the, the bright blue, like this colour blue and this colour red in the brush pens. And I think I've got a white one somewhere. I think I brought the three. Um, the rest are all really old and they don't work very well, like that orange one. So maybe I need to cut my losses and chuck them out and get some new ones because I don't like these hard nibs anyway I mean you can take these apart and um, refill them for anybody who doesn't know they do come apart and you can refill them uh, with acrylic ink or watered down acrylic paint but these bullet tips are really hard the plastic tips Whereas the bullet tips and the fibre tips are much softer. You can see the difference, see? These are fibre tips. You still get a fine line with them, but they're just, I don't know, they're nicer to work with. They don't rip your paper, whereas this rips your paper a lot. I need to get an orange and a green. Still a bit more on this. Oh, it's going a bit more opaque now. There we go, that's more like it. So it's proper orange now, not just watery orange. That's good. 
Maybe it needed a little more shaking than I gave it. So you kind of have to use the side of the tip with these because you can't use the tip because it scratches into the paper. It's weird. I don't I don't like it. I don't like it, okay? I don't like it. I just don't like it. I do like these little thin ones though, I've got a black and a white and they're really really good for, especially if you want to do writing in acrylic because not all of us are good with a brush, especially a tiny detail brush, my hand is not that steady, I wish it was, be better with a pen. Ooh. It gets that scratchy noise on it too, which annoys me. It feels like it's going through the paper. A Posca pen should not go through the paper in a moleskin sketchbook, for goodness sake. Yeah, look, it's gone through the paper in places. It's not as bad as I thought it was, but maybe it's because the paper's wet. Anyway, got a grey here. I think I'm just going to do a little bit of, oops, a little bit of shading under Mama here. Mm. Yeah, my grey is running out as well. So that's going to be in there as well. Just a little bit of shading under Mama. Yep, that grey is almost completely dead. I'll do under her foot when I've finalised what her foot's going to look like. I think maybe I liked it before I coloured it, but I kind of went away from the idea of black and white, didn't I? But never mind. So now I'm going to put up here when I do lettering I don't I don't do lettering particularly neatly I just do two lines like that so what's it called phantom kangaroo I don't know if I can fit kangaroo in there I might need another line above so let's let's fit kangaroo on there so kangaroo Have I left myself enough room to write Phantom? Probably not. Oh, I have. Just about. Just about. Should have put these this closer. That's why it's a good idea to write it in pencil first. But I'm trying to practice not doing that, so. too wide again. Seems to be at certain angles, I just can't 
to a straight line these days. The heck. Of course, I'm not particularly trying to do a straight line, so maybe I'm... Maybe I'm trying to, I'm doing one thing and then judging it as another. That's entirely possible, isn't it? That T doesn't look right. I need to change that. Let's do a. Let's do a corner thing on it so it looks like a T. There we go. That's better. I feel like I'm going to want to give those googly eyes. Because why not? Right? How are we looking now? It's okay. It's okay. I think obviously this foot needs finishing. It's going to have some fur on it. I don't want that. So let's take that out of the equation. It's okay. It's not great. I kind of want to redraw it, but it's okay. She's growing on me. It's kind of like Animal Crossing meets Halloween. <laughs> Reminds me of pictures from the Roald Dahl books. Yeah, that's Quentin Blake. I have a couple of books here actually that I can show you. I've got um, some of my, because I pulled out some books. Quentin Blake is the one who did all the Roald Dahl children's books. He's one of my gods of drawing. Ronald Searle is another one. And Rolf Steadman. Now, Ronald Searle was a, a pen and ink. He used to do dip pen. Um, this is his kind of life's work collection. You might have already mentioned this, but the invitation for your web community is expired. Oh, the um, it'll either be the Trello or the Discord. Is it the Trello or the Discord? One of them expires after 30 days. See, I love, oh, I love looking at this kind of stuff. Hang on, I've got to zoom you out, haven't I? This is the Ronald Searle book. I love looking at this because look how scrubbly all this is. It's got coffee stains and everything on it. And when I see pages like that, I always wonder, did he mean it to look like that? Or did he just scribble out and, you know, it was a page of notes and he was just, you know, did he actually mean for it to have coffee rings and thumbprints all over it or what? Because it's really cool, right? Anyway. <laughs> in some corner of a fallen foreign field that is forever in england telescopic photo taken through the window of a lady's room of a well-known port said host hostelry <laughs> a port port said port said said s-a-i-d i'm not sure where that is 
he's um he's an expert uh satirist but it's his ink work that impresses me we're all we'll all go together when we go this is like 2020 look at it sorry boobs look at the dog and the mouse shaking hands I forgot there was so much um, nudity in his work. But you get the idea. You know, this is... Oh, it's a kangaroo look! <laughs> Bottles of wine and a corkscrew. <laughs> Uncorking the kangaroo, gin Australia. I've got to be careful with this now because I don't know how much is in here. Oh! Hopelessly mixed up vampire bat trying to conceal the fact that its tastes are rigidly vegetarian. <laughs> See? And this guy, look at him. Undersex double horned rhinoceros in search of a reliable aphrodisiac. <laughs> this is just, this is, this is my humour. I like this kind of stuff. He did do Where the Sidewalk Ends, yes. He's done a lot of stuff. Ronald Searle is extremely well known. Um, and there's Ralph Steadman as well. I'm not going to go through any more of that because I just realised how much nudity there is in it. It's not a good one for Instagram. Uh, but that's called In Perspective by Ronald Searle. Uh, but this is, this is Chris Mould and you can see where the influences are. You very much see where the influences are, especially with Chris Mould. I absolutely adore his stuff. I want to be able to draw horses like he can, look. When I nail being able to draw a horse like that, I'm, I will be happy. Kraken. <laughs> now that's the kind of thing I was envisaging when I was, when we were talking about Kraken earlier and I hadn't looked at that for ages. Chris has this on a huge disc on his studio door. And it's got a, th a dial on the front that says whether he's in or out. But you can see, you can clearly see how much of an influence he is on my work. I mean, it's it's obvious to me. And and Ronald Searle and um, Ralph Steadman. Let me find a, an example of Steadman before my phone dies. It's on like 2% battery. Stedman does a lot more kind of political stuff and a lot more colour. Um, but that's that's his um, The Spirit of Gonzo, which is a takeoff of the um, Leaving Las Vegas, Hunter S. Thompson. Right? And then there's Quentin Blake, who is the guy who did the Rolled Sill. Roll Dahl books amongst many 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 others you can't miss Quentin Blake I mean Matilda right everybody knows Matilda that's Quentin Blake um, and Gustav Dorr is a old school lith lithographer type he did um, Dante Dante's Inferno look at this it's like look at all that ink work that is all pen and ink and it's all like demons it's the seven seven circles of hell all these demons and stuff it's so I've got a couple of his books over there actually uh, so much detail and ink work and you know really traditional lithograph type pen and ink so much detail it almost looks like a painting and then there's Dolmier who is both an artist and an illustrator but he did like that's one of his famous one the fat guy <laughs> I can't remember who that's supposed to be um, a couple not suitable for YouTube 
Uh, let me see if I can find one. I think most people would recognise that one. That's Dormier. Like old school cartoonists, pen and ink cartoonists, especially satirical ones. Oh, Shel Silverstein did Where the Sidewalk Ends. Could be. It's all very similar um, styles. I'm not overly familiar with Shel Silverstein's work. Let's see if my phone battery will hold out. One more search. Shell Silverstein. Oh, he did Falling Up. Gotcha. And the Giraffe and a Half. Gotcha. All the pictures are of him and not of his artwork. <laughs> the Light in the Attic. Yeah, it's very Quentin Blake, Ralph Steadman again. Very similar style. God, it's so hard to find one, get one of his pictures up. Everything's either a picture of him or a picture of a book. That one I'm familiar with. Masks. I recognise that illustration. Where the sidewalk ends and everything on it. Yeah, that's Shel Silverstein. You're right. It's a very similar style, though. I can see why you'd mix it up. How to eat an elephant. Playing WoW while watching Brewfest. We're going to be drawing Poe while watching Poefest. Poefest is online this year, by the way. 3rd and 4th of October, if you're interested. I love his colours. He, he does colours, a very dark, kind of muddy, murky looking, dirty colours. And I really like that even though I personally prefer brighter, sort of more dual tone colours. I prefer his scribbles, i got to say. I'm, I mean, I like his work like this, but I actually prefer his scribbled work that's a bit more kind of like this. So, yeah. But the point of this, like I say, is to be able to kind of practice it almost to death, as it were, to practice it to the point of making it mine, if that makes sense. So I hope to see some improvement over the next couple of months, although I'm pretty happy with this. I like it. I like it. I think I could have done it better, but I like it. I think it needs some... See, I'll do this for hours, just tweaking. I think it needs some... This is a much fine... This is also a ballpoint pen, but it's not a Bic. And it's a much finer nib. So I kind of feel like I can add some shading with this without it overtaking the picture. Unfortunately, I think this pen's running out. <laughs> no! Don't do it! Oh, I can't, I can't change, I can't refill it either. No! Don't do it. Don't die on me. Actually, you know what? I like writing with that pen, so I'm going to... 
I'll swap to a fine bit. Which will do the same job. Put the lines back in where I accidentally went over them with white. light source I think we want the light source coming kind of that way so this will be in shadow and there will be a slight shadow under the chin actually works better than the other one for shading so it's a good job I like writing with the other one. <laughs> Let's see there should be a little bit of shadow underneath the arm. Scrubbling onto this one just to make sure it's got you no know, bald patches. I don't want bald patches. You can still see the texture with ballpoint pen, that's what I like about it. That's better. It's not much, but it makes a difference. So light, probably should be just a little bit coming up around here, maybe just a tiny bit there. Yeah, looks better. I'm calling it done even though that writing is kind of annoying me because it's all squished over to one side I should have written that out in pencil I never leave myself enough room I always do the first few letters too big and then I don't have enough room but again working on different size paper to what I normally do so right so there you go that's today's session I think I'm done uh, congratulations to Deborah, who won the initial drawing for the, ended up with a tarot reading, and uh, Nicole, who is now looking forward to doing Halloween Chronicles. If you're still interested in doing Halloween Chronicles, don't forget, if you are a patron, you can get the Halloween Chronicles and Christmas Chronicles over on the website as a bundle. If you want to do When Frog Sing 2021, you can also get that in as part of a bundle with the two chronicles and if you just want to try the chronicles just do uh just go down in the description and you'll find a code crow all capital letters that gets you 10 percent off the one class don't forget the pdf yeah i'm going to do the pdf i'm going to have some food and then i'll do the pdf i think i've done the pdf already i just haven't uploaded it that's why i didn't haven't that's why I forgot to do it yesterday, because all I had to do was upload it, which is bound to get me into trouble, isn't it? When that's all I had to do. I should have just told Katie to do it. 
because I'm pretty sure it's already done. I should have just uploaded it and said, Katie, can you put the, the PDF up for me? Because she wouldn't have forgotten. But I do. Yay. This is why I have a bullet journal. But no, it's it's written on my it's written on my thing right here. Right here. It's gonna be cute. Look at that. <laughs> well, one Halloween prompt down. I might write the Halloween prompts into here actually. Into this useless page. I might write the Halloween prompts on here for the drawloween prop drawloween thing. One down. I only intended to sketch it today, but we've done a whole one now. So, thanks for joining me. And I will speak to you again anon. Hey, nonny, 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 no. <laughs> speak to you later, guys. Thanks for joining me. Au revoir. Can't find the button. Hold that thought. There it is. Bye.